Throw Gang, we are joined by the timepiece titan, the dial Don Dada, you old and broke, he nouveau riche. Must be urologist how he got AP. He's shitting on your wrist, that's a butt dial. Got the road, let's a pro because his wrist going crazy. Must be a Bolshevik because he's coming for the crown. Oh, you like horology? How about whores all in the G's nuts? The big bezel baller, king of the clasp, dip, dick pointed south because he busts down. Timepiece going nuts and busting, that's a wristicle. Must be a stud because you know he got that strap on. The mainspring is main ting. No filler, just big faces. So fly, call him Birdman the lugs. He watches the Watchmen, watch dealer, content creator, and overall watch savant Mike Nouveau. Mike, how the hell are you? That was amazing. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Incredible. I'm great. Thank you very much for having me. Would that go well on TikTok? I think so. That's a okay. good one. Dick yeah. points out because he bust down. <laughs> well you're done. Big, you're a big bust down fellow, right? Yeah, I love bust downs. Yeah, for sure. Uh -huh. Have you ever owned a bust down? No. Never. Plain I, Jane's exclusively? Only plain Jane. I mean, you could have factory diamonds. Right. No, of course. Yeah, of course. But otherwise, yeah, plain Jane. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Duh. Course. You yeah, for, uh, Mike, long time coming. We're so happy to have you, dude. I'm happy to be here. Let's do a fit check real quick. I mean, we obviously want to talk about what's on the wrist, but the choice for you in terms of everything else that you're wearing, you want to go top down or bottom up? Bottom up. Thank yes. you. Like Trey right. Songs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sure. That's why we have that rule in place because yeah. of Trey Songs. First Trey Songs reference of the new year. Yeah. Mark of it down. all time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's on, on the, the feet, I got the Stussy Timberlands mm -hmm. with the, was it a kangaroo? Le uh, no, ostrich leather uppers. With the lime laces. Yep. I got the Namacheco. Um, like red jeans. Are these uh, like a printed denim? No, it's not. I think it's just a really weird wash. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm not really sure. They're cool. Um, Shout out to Macheco. Yeah. I don't really know anything about them. It's I, like I, it's like big. It's like bigger brain, but not like huge brain. Are they you know? Russian? Uh, I, I think, don't think like so. one of those other countries, like, oh, uh, like Hungarian sure. or some shit. Okay. You know? <laughs> some Eastern Bloc bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wait. What about the socks? Socks are just, I think, Uniqlo. Okay. Nice. Um, I got the Cortez sweatshirt so that's how you pronounce it we know I think boys so. with clint yeah Wait, how do you sure. not know your best your besties with clint you don't know how to pronounce it um cortez i think okay cortez right. i think are yeah. you on cortez are you on cortez so, but people say cortez right um Corti is cortez no no I, that's definitely not correct <laughs> it's uh it's i say cortez i think it's cortez i think you'd also say cortez and i think okay. both are acceptable to be honest right. good to know um so wait, so in the comments to james's question did you get that free shit from clint um i paid for this nice. um i didn't even tell him i was ordering it. i just like the support okay wow. you what, put, a, what a guy <laughs> do you put like in the company name like nouveau industries so you know hopefully someone sees it i do that with throwing fits when i do the order. order when i'm ordering something sometimes i'll be a company throwing fits. no just, just, i mean just my name i mean <laughs> <laughs> and i'm supposed really to be the thirsty one but that's kind of an interesting move i like do that. you have a like a business yeah, I mean, I have just an LLC that I do business under. Okay. Yeah. Mike Nouveau LLC? Michael or? Nouveau LLC. Okay, yeah. Michael, excuse me. If you want to dox me. <laughs> you didn't come up with like a cool like uh, yeah. watch pun? Like like time for wrists LLC yeah. or anything like that? Yeah. No. I mean, maybe, I mean, I don't know if I, maybe I'll need to change it. I've had this same LLC forever. So it is not, it wasn't originally watch specific. What's under the Cortez? I'm pretty sure this is just like a Uniqlo shirt. Okay. Nothing super exciting. I got the Fugazi hat. Shout actually, out Trev, they, dude. Yeah, I actually don't know if this is Fugazi or Fugazi. Fugazi it's like a the woozy, band. It's a wazi. It's yeah, a, yeah I think exactly. It's Fugazi. I but, thought Fugazi. I wasn't sure if it was the Donnie Roscoe way. Fugazi. Right. Right. I th I say What'd Fugazi just because of the band. <laughs> just because of the band. Yeah. Right. Right. Shout out DC. Yeah. What about the big fucking parka? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I got the the Junior Watanabe North Amari. Face. Yeah. Um, from fall winter 2017, I think. I got it new back then. Mm. Uh, I haven't worn it in a while. I thought I would bust it out. It's pretty cool. Can I ask you a loaded question real Please. quick? Please. So every time I've seen you or anytime anyone's seen you, you kind of have like the Mike Nouveau uniform. You definitely strayed today. Was that on purpose or am I also just bugging? Well, the uniform was is not intentional. It's just more of a like a laziness thing. It's not okay. like a it's not intentional. No. In it's, terms of like, I'm a uniform guy. No, but I mean, I, I like a lot of the stuff. A lot of the stuff that I buy, you know, gets better with patina, whether it's boots, mm -hmm. watches, jeans, or leather jackets. And under the hood, motherfucker. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I like his wear and tear. Yeah, I definitely do like some honest wear and tear. <laughs> but no, I mean, <laughs> also- dishonest wear and tear? Yeah. yeah like and, buying some Yeah, I basically, like, I basically have, that, have that Fine Creek, like horse leather jacket that I mm -hmm. wear that looks, honestly looks really amazing after it's been worn for like three or four years. I, and I rock that, um, the Carhartt Awake collab mm -hmm. that, that got flowed to me. Friends and fam. Though, yeah, yeah, for know. sure. Um, and you know, I just, that was like the only warm thing in my, I, okay. I, I had like, you know, I didn't pay any attention to men's fashion for about a decade. 
like from and the wrist started, you were still partying. Yeah, basically. So <laughs> and I really the watch started talking to you like the Green Goblin. Mask. <laughs> exactly. Exactly right. Um, like so the did tell-tale you get heart. Up for us or not? That's the question. Yeah, I mean, you know, I okay. turned it up a little bit that's for nice. us. That's know, all I wanted. Uh, you busted out the big junior. Come on now. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, that, that used on. to be my daily. If you scroll back far enough on the Instagram, you'll see that a lot. That okay. was well. Like, there's a lot of reels now clogging up. That I know you're right now. It's all watch stuff. You have time. I know you have to scroll back. Do you have a far. burner that isn't watch stuff? Nope. Interesting. Yeah. I wasn't even intending on doing anything on Instagram. I was pretty TikTok specific. And then Instagram was like personal stuff. Um, no, you know, not private, but you know, just, right, like right, my, right. just my personal stuff. And then where does the brand end and the personal it's begin? It's true. Michael? Yeah. Yeah. You can't separate the art from the artist. No, you cannot. Um, and can't then separate the watch from the wrist. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I started reluctantly doing reels as well, just putting the TikToks also onto onto Instagram reels. And so now it's all watch you stuff got on, it, man. on the Instagram. You, fuck, you fucking got yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, what are the panties? Uh, Calvin Klein. Nice. Yeah. Boxer briefs. About that. Boxer briefs, of nice. course. Of course. Of course. Yeah. And let's finally. Let's get fi- to the oh, Before we get to. Yes. The wristicle. Yeah. Anything else? Any neck? Any other hardware on you? No, I don't wear. I don't really wear accessories. I got the Jacques Marie Maj sunglasses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I have like eight pairs of these. What? What? Yeah. For real, dude? Yeah. How are you a collector? I, lo- I mean, it is something funny where it's like people do buy, sell, and trade them. Um, and there's you, like a, a, a bus in secondary market for JMM. There, there really is a dealer's chat. There's like on style <laughs> forum on style forum. There's like, I mean, that's a throwback. Um, there's like a thousand page thread or something on, oh, on J. Yeah. It's really crazy, yeah. but I, I haven't bought a pair in over a year and a half. Now it's like, I see every douchebag in town wearing these sure. things. Like everyone, like all these but Kendall Roy wannabes. Right. Now into, I see them every 20 a day. So okay. I'm like, that, you got to tap in with, you got to tap in with Dita. Yeah, I, I had Ditas back in the day. Yeah, that's the I think that's I had those the Tom Brown Ditas. I think. Okay. Mm. Wait, so seeing other fucking or see not other seeing bozos wearing JMMs bums you out because the watch game is the same shit, right? Yeah, lots of bozos there as well. Thousand. Yeah, right. No, for sure. No, you're right. But I don't know. There is something. I think anybody who you know is into something specific. And you start seeing it on every stockbroker in town. Right. Or it's, you know, I don't, whatever. It's not like I stop wearing them, but you know, I don't. I probably don't need any more than eight pairs. Definitely probably not at all, all dude. <laughs> What's the biggest bozo watch right now? <sighs> wow, um, that's so tough because there's so many options. Ninety nine percent of them are bozo watches. To be honest, wow. yeah, I know. The majority, well, yeah, the majority. Yeah, huge, huge, huge majority are, are like what are bozo watches. You just like yeah, the du jour. Off- off top. God, I mean, I can go niche or I can go specific. I mean, big Rolexes, like, uh, excuse me. Yeah, sorry. Just move my arm. Present, not that big, present no. company excluded. <laughs> um, like the big fucking, like the fuck you a faces. Yacht Master? Yeah, I'm not a, not a Yacht much. Master fan, not a Sky Dweller fan. Right. Um, Panerai, still Bozo move? I, I mean, it's it's almost so far gone that it's almost back again. Right, because it's like the, the circle like, of watches. Yeah. The skinny jeans of watches. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it really, though. really is. And what's That's funny, it's funny you say that because I do notice. Like a, a like, dudes who have been wearing big watches so long are so reluctant to go any smaller. Then once once they finally relent, like it, it's almost going to be too late, and we're going to be back around right, again. Right, right, right. They like there's it. definitely dudes who just started wearing skinny jeans two years ago. Sure, and you know it's kind of a. When are we going to bring back pocket watches? <laughs> God, that, I mean, they, you know, they, they, pocket they had a huge moment like 20 or 30 years ago where in like, were, ste- like hipster steampunk era. No, like, I mean, with even amongst real collectors, I have like what. I have like 400 old auction catalogs from like yeah. the 70s on and like half of those auction catalogs consisted of pocket watches up until like <laughs> the late 90s. Damn. That's so whack, dude. Literal pocket watching. You need to see it. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. Literal. So what are you rocking today? Oh, let's okay. get to oh, yeah. Michael. So this is my, I mean, this has sort of become my daily driver. This is my, uh, my Cartier, uh, it's called the Cousin. Really, people call it the bamboo. Mm-hmm. Know Beautiful see, piece. See it over yeah. there. It's a really rare one. It's more rare than... Uh, like even the Cartier crash, they made it for a couple of years in the late seventies. And I, I always wanted one. I, I think I had only seen like three of them in real life. Damn. And then wow. I got, I got, a, I got a really, really lucky call that someone had one for like nothing. I mean, had you put out relatively the back signal, nothing. Had you put out the back signal that this was something you had been hunting down or did you just kind of No, like, I mean, I try not to do that um, because then people will kind of try to. They'll snake you. Yeah, for sure. They'll oh, squeeze shit. you. It's like that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They, definitely. Um, but I had mentioned it in videos, like here's some cool Cartiers that you've never right. heard of, blah, blah, blah. And then someone hit me up, not because of that, just because they had it and they thought of me. 
um, which is kind of the benefit of talking about this stuff all day long is people think of you when they find something and sometimes right. that something is really rare or valuable. Is that the most you've ever spent on a timepiece personally for yourself? No, but it's probably the most valuable one. Oh shit. Yeah. But I so you got a real deal on it yeah. or a dealish. Yeah. I got, I did a whole video of like starting when this guy texted me, I started recording cause I knew it was going to be kind of a grail pickup mm -hmm. and then I kind of documented it and then I got it and I posted about it and then like. Uh, there was actually like an article that mentioned the video about the Cartier. Oh, wow. Yeah. They kind of referenced this and the fact that the Cartier market's been, the vintage Cartier market has been exploding. And then one of these went at auction for like 60 grand, wow. like a couple of weeks what later. And that prompted even more kind of articles about, you know, within the watch world. So this is the it. Mike Nouveau effect we're talking yeah, about? Yeah, right. So you have I guess so. I mean, and a lot of people already associate this watch with me and there's just so few of them. Wait, real talk. If you start, pumping a watch if you're just like yo this thing's yeah, fire this thing's rare whatever yeah. will it do you are you in a position in the watch world where it will garner more attention more dollars more fucking hunters and seekers and gatherers that are like going to actually look for what is it, the bamboo yeah the bamboo uh, yes i say i i mean i can do that i haven't intentionally done it um i suppose i so could if we put out a throwing power comes great response if we put out a throwing fits watch and we like slide your little fucking envelope could you be like yo a throne fit watch is fucking it would have to be it would have to be a thick envelope <laughs> okay well, but no, yeah no but we could talk about it okay let's start with sea dwellers so i could just flip this for a little yeah sea dwellers the it. hot new watch you heard it here oh, yeah. first clip it and you're 49 millimeters <laughs> yeah, you know. and you're sipping on a diet pepsi a dp cheers bro cheers to you My, superior to wow. diet coke yep. we just fucking say that on the record well what's funny is that i was drinking diet coke from basically an infant up yep. until like <laughs> 10 years ago. Maybe that's, that's how I ended healthy. up this way. And then I, I actually did quit like cold Turkey. And then when I kind of started, fell off the wagon with the DP. I, it was kind of an intentional. I'm like, you know what? If I start with diet Pepsi, it's not the same. <laughs> right. Okay. It's like, if it's I, a whole new addiction. Exactly. Like if I just do pills it's not the same as like cocaine. <laughs> so I could like start doing pills. Yes. Damn. Not this that, is, I, not that sound, I do that, but this is sound logic. Dude. Yeah. I'm so, into it. And now whatever. Wow. I'll we just, got the real drink Pepsi generation now. over here. Jesus. But you Christ. prefer DP over DC? As of now, yes. All also, right. growing up, all the pizza places had Diet Pepsi yeah. and other restaurants had Diet Coke. So I, I associate Diet Pepsi with like is that a, pizzerias. Where are you from? I'm from uh, Nyack, New York. Okay. Is that a, is that a Northeast thing? Because I feel like Pepsi joints were like Pepsi cornered the market on pep, on pizza joints. Maybe. I mean, Feels probably. Like <laughs> probably <laughs> Thinking back as a kid. Some mafia shit. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Ascar. And right. you're, yeah, I'll ask Gar. Um, <laughs> You're you're from Bergen County. Yes, sir. So I'm from Rockland County, New okay. York. Yeah, yeah. So I just heard you mention that recently. I didn't know that you're from the Wa. Mawa, yeah, baby. Yeah. I have I had a bunch of friends grew up like kind of skateboarding over there. Okay, Route Did 17 you, North, baby. Yeah, yeah vibes. Yeah, Paramus Park. Did you know Mall. this guy? Did mm -hmm. you uh no. The <laughs> no, no, we didn't cross not. paths. The lead <laughs> not as far as I know. Decks. Yeah. The worst <laughs> the worst seller at the local David Hollister or whatever. Like no, dude, it's first of all. Hollister? Hollister, straight yeah. up. Wait, you don't know about Hollister? No, but he worked there. Yeah, oh, I you did? Yeah, I worked at a Hollister. Wow, was shirtless? Fired. That's where you found all no, the clothes. No, I wasn't. Okay. But I was like uh, in the front of the store. I wasn't like relegated to the back because You didn't of see the... him at 21, bro? You didn't tap in and see him I, at 21? Actually, I, I did see it I, on my way here. I tapped in. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you're sipping on DP yeah. and Greenpoint's finest. Yep. Um, all right, fit check, drink check, complete, right? Fully? Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get into the meat Cool, let's do it. Podcast. Mike Nouveau. Yes. First question, mm -hmm. big watch pod. What time is it? Let me check my phone. Yeah, please. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Phone. Nailed it. <laughs> it's one fifty three. One fifty three. Two weeks after the Super Bowl live. <laughs> oh, you're weeks. already getting out yeah. of that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Besides this bamboo watch, what like what watches do you actually wear? Do you have a rot are you a rotation guy? Or are you like yeah? I do uh, have a rotation. Um, I don't have any right now. There are no Rolexes in the collection by uh, design. I mean, I had one, my first, my first one ever. And then I kind of got out of it okay. because I was just kind of burned out on it. And people were like, no, you can't sell it. It's your first watch ever. And I was like, like I don't really have any nostalgia about it. So I, so I traded it. And then what was that Roly? That was a Rolex GMT, a vintage one from 1967. Oh, right. With the beautiful fuchsia. Yeah, fuchsia or, yeah. bezel insert for the nerds out there. Um, and it was the first watch I ever got. I never had watches growing up. My family didn't have watches. Um, you have a Casio calculator? No, not even that. I had like no watches growing up, period. Are Rolex guys like a certain subset of watch guys? No, I think it's like the majority of watch guys are, are Rolex, Rolex guys. guys. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't say anybody like, I can't think of any collector who trip dislikes Rolex. I mean, right. they're, they're the kings for sure. Right. It's like it's a Nike of Yeah, it's watches. just like the modern stuff is like completely uninspired and uninteresting. Well, so do you think that you're then one of the few that's like a, like a public harsh critic of Rolex? 
Um, or is that I mean, there's so the- many like little communities within the watch, which is within the watch collector community. Um, a lot of the dudes I follow and interact with a lot, all kind of too collect cool the school. same. No, it's not too cool. It's not too cool for school, but it, it's like a little boring. Yeah. I mean, if you're talking about modern Rolexes, is they're essentially mass produced items. They're like, you know, it's like the Apple right. of what, which is perfectly fine. And like, there's, they still make amazing stuff and at the end of the day, that's what's important. It's a durable watch you could probably have for your entire life. Mm-hmm. In terms of collecting, it's not hyper interesting to me because when did Rolex fall off in your estimation? <sighs> um, name the year. I mean, it's truly, this is truly my opinion because probably nobody else would ever yeah. say Rolex has fallen off for uh, I, I don't know, 1997. Damn, tough year. Yeah, Woo! Clinton, baby. Damn, what happened in '97? Clinton, no. the internet, yeah. <laughs> Bill Gates. <laughs> Um, no, they just kind of, uh, th- that was just one kind of era where it went from more vintage feeling to more modern feeling with a change in production and stuff. It's real nerdy stuff that okay. no one really cares about, but I don't know. I would say people say, when, when do you consider vintage? I say for Rolex late nineties, 2000, just cause that's an easy time to date it. Cause there's before that and there's after that and they kind of change production. Yeah. Gotcha. Nerdy shit. Does Rolex hate this guy? Yeah. Probably don't even know I exist. I'm really? sure. Yeah. Probably not. What you have relationships with what? Cartier? Cartier, Jager Lecoult, Audemars Piguet. Nice. And not relationships. I mean, they know contacts. I exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. contacts. Mm. So I don't, I don't get flowed anything, nothing like that. Do you have one of those peacock watches from Corum? Yamir Yager? What's, what's that uh, brand called? Corum is the one that does the peacock watches. Okay. Those are cool. Yeah. Uh, those, are, those are coming is back. Is Yager an ambassador or something? Yeah, or what was the, Jager Lecoult. Yeah, that one. Yager <laughs> Yager. <laughs> that's what I thought he said. No, um, <laughs> they don't do the they don't do the peacock feather. Uh, that's a different brand, but I love Jager Lecoult. They're amazing. There's so much money flying around the watch world, obviously, Insane especially amounts. now more than ever. Yes. Um, and I think that the watch world has embraced. They were a little late. Well, the content creators relate to the watch game, but the watch industry has kind of embraced the content creators. Like, and there's so much money flying around. Are you scared to be? Or are most people, and are you scared to be like critical of like certain brands or certain models when they're, when there is like kind of this, I don't know, quid pro quo relationship yeah. going around? I mean, I guess it's the kind of the, you know, with every, not, I'm not a journalist, but every, but probably journalists deal, deal with this all the time as well, where it's like, okay, if they're really nice to you and they're flying you around and you befriend everyone at the company, are you really going to like talk shit about them? Right. Even if there is something to talk shit about. I try no. not to do too many, too many negative videos even though those are the ones that get the most views. Oh, really? Always, of yeah. course, dude. Um, hate, hate, hate. But, you know, there's some brands that, like, I can't imagine fucking with no, almost no matter what. Really? Um, I mean, as of right now, again, things come full circle, and maybe in 10 years, Hublot will be the coolest watch <laughs> brand again. I don't know, maybe, oh, but, let's like... Let's get Jay-Z on the horn and does, fucking push some bars. It does rhyme with your last name, kind of. Nouveau Hublot? Yeah, I was yeah, trying to think of for the intro, but oh. couldn't think of it. Okay. Um, so... Is this your grail watch or is there something now that you've acquired this, does something else well, pique yeah. your fans, tickle your pickle? There's always there's always another pickle tickler yep. <laughs> in the future. to scratch. Uh, but I do think people overuse the term grail. To me, grail should be like kind of a once in a lifetime okay. thing that may be completely unobtainable. A and one and done, straight up. Yeah, and it was something that's most likely unobtainable, I'd say, is what I would call a grail. Everyone uses it now, so I kind of started it's like using it. goat. Basically, yes. There can only be one goat by definition. Right. I probably have like 10 different grails currently. So and you know, they? it changes. Okay. Uh, per- Patek Philippe perpetual calendar. Sure. Of course. Uh, a perpetual calendar chronograph from Patek Philippe. Um, so two what, Pateks. What, what price range are we talking about? Are we in the yeah. seven figgies? What are we doing? Um, no. no, for the perpetual calendar, I mean, mine, mine is for the watch nerds, the reference 3940. You can get them between Easy. 40 and $70,000. Easy. Light work. And then the perpetual calendar chronograph, I, I would want like a vintage one. So like a, Reference twenty four ninety nine, and you're talking about closing in on a million dollars between ha- half a million and a million. John Lennon had one, okay, and had. it's when he was shot. Yeah, no, yeah. but he got it. Oh, uh, look yeah, at the time. imagine time, time of death. To die. Time of death. <laughs> I think he was wearing. I don't remember. I think he was wearing like a simple Patek Philippe when he was shot. No, that fire oh, ever go up for auction? That's no, crazy. but the twenty four ninety nine. This really, really without without the John Lennon provenance. This is an extremely important and rare watch. Why he had important? one. Uh, it's, it's just like an just icon, is. like an icon amongst icons, sort of. And it's just like a, it was a like collector. Paul, the Paul Newman effect, the Brando effect, like if a celeb is wearing well, it. Well, it, it, like, it's not super known. The fact that he owned one was is not like talked about the way that Paul okay, Newman sure. is talked about. However, this watch reappeared. Apparently, the story is maybe his driver stole it or <gasps> something or something like that. The Nestor. And, then, and then it went to like a small, maybe German auction house like 30 years ago. Is it German? Be the and ones sold. You know. Yeah. 
you know, the Germans, you know, they, they never take other people's uh, property in, <laughs> no, in times of trauma. Coming up sure a lot on the yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then, so the person who bought it kept it in a safe or something. And then there was potentially a lawsuit, a three-way lawsuit with like Yoko mm -hmm. Ono, the estate, the auction house, the owner of who really owns this thing. And there's literally, I think, a lawsuit in New York, a lawsuit in Geneva. And But if it does clear up and this thing goes to auction, this will probably be the most expensive watch or expensive vintage watch ever sold. What are we talking? 30 to $50 million. Wow. Yes. Do you think it's going to go up? Do you think this will all be resolved? I don't know. I feel like it's almost too good of a story to be true. Okay. I mean, it's true. The watch is, I mean, there's a, there's a famous photo with him wearing it literally yeah. is like he doing this. The, is he doing the funny John Lennon John walk? <laughs> no. Walk? McGregor walk? He's standing and he has <laughs> it like this, just like a few months before he died. Um, and it's probably without that photo, there'd probably be far, far less interest. Cause huh. I don't know if there's any other photos of him wearing it. gone wrong, dude. He should have fucking, Hinkley, dude. he should have yeah. flicked up his wrist more on for IG. Uh, he uh, should have, <laughs> he should have, he should have thought ahead. If yeah. I may make a suggestion, why don't you do a content series of, uh, famous people and the watches they were wearing when they got fucking yacht. Yeah, yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. Well, what was Archduke Ferdinand wearing when he got fucking exploded, Pocket watch. Bro? Pocket yeah, watch. Probably sure. a pocket watch, yeah. Lincoln, pocket watch. Shinzo yeah. Abe. Yeah. Probably, probably had the Grand Seiko. Yeah, 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 probably. For sure. <laughs> the snowflake joint, dude. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so, do you, okay, so uh, is that your Mount... So there's a difference between like Grails and then like Mount Rushmore. Because Mount Rushmore, I feel like, not is less personal speaking. Just what do you consider the four... Greatest watches of all time. Yeah. Oh, wow. right. Platonic ideals, right? Okay, so let's say the Patek Philippe 2499. Okay. Um, okay. Yep. So also John Lennon's is Tiffany signed. Oh, there you go. That's another another aspect of it. What's the difference between signed and stamped? Or just Same a, thing. Okay. Yeah, basically yeah. back in the day, brands would send their watches to retailers, mm -hmm. and then the retailers would also put their names on the dial. Got and it. now, 10 million years later, that's worth a lot more if that's the case. Gotcha. Um, okay, I would love a uh, a Cartier tank centre, which is like the curved tank. It's kind of like the Cartier collector's Cartier. It's like mm. uh, it, you know, it's a you long, know. it's a long curved tank, and it was the ones from like mm. the from the twenties to the seventies are very okay. iconic, very if it's rare. Curved, it feels better. Exactly right. <laughs> curved for her pleasure. Yep. Yep. Curved, but not ribbed. Unfortunately. <laughs> um, what else? Also, speaking of the sign dials. Cartier put their name on a few Rolexes Ooh. and those sell for like gang bang. It's I mean, like the Gucci Balenciaga collab. Yeah, like basically, <laughs> yeah, basically. So you could find potentially they're extraordinarily rare, a Rolex Submariner that's signed Cartier so on it. Sick, and then you're talking about quarter million dollars probably. Woo. Yeah. But I always wanted one of those. It's like graffiti artists fucking tagging over their, their op yeah, shit. Yeah, for sure. I like that. Okay. Yo, Rolex is toy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly like that. Exactly. Uh, so what is that? Two, three? Is that two? That's three. Yeah. That's three. Oh man, I should have thought about this more. Um, just a goat. One of four goats. Just yeah. again. Who are we carving in the watch world? What is the most stone. the most important shit? Uh, is this is my opinion, or or if, if your opinion that, of what's the most important, but not your opinion of what is most important. Like not, okay, I was giving you. you I was giving you my Mount, Mount Rushmore. Well, keep, it it going. Just keep it going. Okay. Um, I mean, you could say a Paul Newman Daytona would be on mm -hmm. the list. I mean, I don't care about them that much, <laughs> but like, if you're talking about a Mount Rushmore, that probably goes on there. Uh, God, I would love like a very early Jagger Lecoultre Reverso. Um, there's a lot of other Cartiers I want. It, it's hard. Is Cartier your number one? Right, I'd say right now they're they're my number one, and it's like a very interesting facet of the watch collecting world because they really made so few watches up until like the 1970s. Right. I mean, we're talking about like. Uh, low thousands per year from like 1918 to 1970. I mean, that's it. You're they were about, focused on other types yeah, of Yeah, it just jewelry, wasn't their yeah. main business. You got to think Rolex makes like what, 1.5 million watches a year or something insane <laughs> yeah, like that. Fuck. So you're there were years where they made a couple of hundred watches. Damn. So that, so the, you know, people are like, oh, we're in a Cartier bubble. I'm like, I don't know if this could be a bubble if you're talking about things that are completely unfindable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, what year is the bamboo from? This is probably like 1976, 1977. Box and papes on that no, or no, no chance? No, okay. no, it doesn't completely irrelevant if you ask me that's another like Ooh, some people nice. it's kind of like a way Let's to go. determine like new collectors from like Ooh, really serious old school fuck. collectors like the nouveaus fail. versus the nouveau if someone hits me up and says it has to have box and papers i i'm like okay go find somebody else to find this watch right for you. right um good luck with that loser yeah, i mean for new watches it's it's fine whatever old watches like first of all rare to have it 
also so easy to fake, ridiculously easy. I mean, Italian <laughs> right. watch dealers have been busted having like the Rolex stamps, like the presses from right. the factories. You can still today buy a- It's like our Italian COVID nurse <laughs> who just had the counterfeit stamps. Yes, yeah. that's exactly <laughs> what it is. You could, buy, you could buy the old papers. People will take the papers, put them in a pile of old books so they smell- Oh, like musty. Vintage. And they're so, so easy to fake. If someone's like, oh, how do you know it's real? If it doesn't have papers, I just like, oh God, you really don't know what you're talking about, do you? Damn. Because, you know- This is good to know. I'm always like box and page. No, yeah. it's it's a thing where people think they know what they're talking about and as soon as- Yep, checks yeah. out. Yep. Big, big poser shit. Yeah. Do you think, you mentioned the word bubble. It's a, a, a mm-hmm. dangerous, a fraught word. Do you yes. think we're in like a, because again, the attention, the money, uh, the, the, the desire, the, the content supply, like, around do, it. Do you think we're in Cognition. any sort of watch bubble where eventually like the interest is going to- die down a little bit and people are going to be stuck with their fucking watches around their dicks. Well, I'd say we're, all, we're already coming That's down sick. from a certain, like the COVID bubble yeah. Yeah. where we're like pricing NFT guys. Yeah. Yeah. Where pricing was going like a bit nuts, but that's mostly a thing about uh, regarding modern watches. Right. Mm-hmm. And also a lot of these articles you see on Bloomberg or whatever are like completely bullshit. They'll take like, Oh, the Patek Philippe 57, the Nautilus is down like 80% from the high. Meanwhile, they took the highest price ever sure. listed, not sold. Like, Oh, somebody mm. listed one for a quarter million dollars it's good and bait. now they're selling for 80. Meanwhile, none ever sold at a quarter right, million right, dollars. Right, right. Um, so yeah, I mean, it is, it is mostly clickbait, but a lot of those, those type of watches are, you know, they've come back to earth. We're still talking about five times retail price, right, right, right. but you know, not 10 times retail as, as it once was. People are saying that some Rolexes are easier to get new Rolexes. I mean, I don't know if it's a, I mean, even if it's a bubble, like, okay, so then we'll just buy them cheaper and sell them cheaper and right. the profit margin remains the same. I mean, True. that's, that's a, from a dealer's point of view. You're not uh, stressed. From, from, Oh, definitely not. From a content creator's point of view, it sounds like if anything, there's even like, I don't know, you see headlines like Gen Z, like they fought, like they care about watches more than millennials now at this point. Right. Do you find that like, are you getting uh, more attention and more clicks and views from the fucking children's? Um, the children God, it's, want it's, 50, it's hard, watches? It's hard to say because I don't really check my analytics, but when I first started TikTok, I was like, okay, I'm the oldest person mm-hmm. on this app. And it's like, I don't like, I, I'm sure these like 18 year olds don't really care about this stuff. And the other thing is other dealers were like, does this really have an effect on business? I'm like, some of these kids have fucking money. Right. And they're ready to buy like cool vintage watches and they don't necessarily need to start at like Tudor or Omega. They want to go straight for Patek Philippe and they want to go straight to vintage and they're they're 19 years old. And that's, I mean, they need some type of Yoda spirit guide, right? Because they don't know shit from Shinola. Yeah, (laughs) no pun intended, a good one. Wait, so when you got on TikTok and the other dealers, when you're having these conversations or whatever with with the homies, like are people like, yo, you're a clown, this is ridiculous. No, I mean, they might have been thinking that, but they didn't say it to my face. Okay, They may have been like, what are you doing? Right. But I know I- Do a dance, Mike. And early. And like, not that you were shy. I'm probably more. <laughs> I'm probably more inclined to like. At, at the very beginning, I was way more self conscious about it. And I really wanted to make sure nothing was like too corny. Right now, it's like now it's all corny. Well, you have no, fun no, with no. it. I mean, no, no, yeah. Now I could be do a little more, have a little more fun. But when I was first, I'm like, okay, think about the dealers that have been doing this for 30 years. Are going to be watching this video. People you're going to be dealing with, right? right. You know? Yeah, I'm like, so make sure you keep it in, in like informative, factual. Like it doesn't have to be typical. But now you're fast and loose with the information. You're just like, <laughs> yeah, now I just make shit up. I, yeah. <laughs> it's all, yeah. Fuck it's boxing like, pigs. Find a hot girl, put a, put yeah, a, for sure. that always a Rolex on her wrist and shoot it. No. Well, I wanted to ask you this. What do you think does set you apart in like the pretty crowded watch content guy space? And you know, you've become the watch guy definitively yeah. without a doubt. Okay. Oh, well, I brother? appreciate you saying that. Um, I think w- First of all, I do just, I basically do just vintage more or less, I'd say 90% vintage. And there's not that many other people doing that. There's plenty of people doing watch negotiations for like a 2023, like Hulk or something like that. Right. Like a role, like it's easy to do that. Like, um, if you want to talk about modern Rolex, I guess you could do that all day. I like finding real treasures and documenting it, you know, so there's, it's like not so different from the dudes who are doing like the metal detecting videos right, and, right, right. and the storage <laughs> Raiders and, and like stuff yeah. like that. It's, you know, Watch I, halls, I like keeping, wrist wars. Yeah. I like yeah. keeping it like kind of feeling like, kind of like a treasure hunt in some of the videos. Right. Um, I'm also very consistent. I post like almost every single day. You really do. Damn. You're in these streets. It's brother. like a little tiny, like 60 second documentary every single day, basically. Are you fucked today? Cause you're giving us two hours. No, I, I posted one. <laughs> I posted. You got it out of the way. No, but are you going to, what are you going to record today for tomorrow? Or is that not your schedule? No, I mean, I try to record as much as I can. The problem is coming up with content and right. coming up with the grind. or finding scenarios or finding watches. Yeah. Um, I have something half filmed that I could finish filming today. Hopefully for tomorrow. I have like one video in the queue, but I really, sometimes the struggle is, like, what the hell do I talk about today? Right. Do you ever feel 
like it's okay to not post. <laughs> yeah, I did okay. even more right, so good, lately. Good. I just, I'm yeah. checking on you. Yeah, as, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, all right. I think in terms of like the little universe and cast of characters you like you've created around you must like really help with creating that kind of because like oh, I'm just gonna link with the homie Scar today or yes. like whatever any of these fucking guys that just pull up on you. You know. Yeah, that was Hugo. Hugo, Hugo you want to watch? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it was un- unintentional, but people is really crazy that people will mention. Like the quote unquote characters sure. in the video, in, in other videos, like oh, we, oh, got, we, got, we got Scar, yep, Hugo, we got Hugo, Hugo. We, got, we got that guy, Clint. that car guy, with Mr. Enthusiast, hair, Mr. Enthusiast. Yep. We have is he the one who wears the stupid ass socks all the time? Is that Mr. Enthusiast? Who wears the fun socks? I think. That's, oh yeah, he that's, does. He does wear the swag. Yeah. white guy. Shout out to the <laughs> Mr. Enthusiast. You got that. That. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he had he was a podcaster too. Was oh, yeah. Wow. I can't I'm imagine shocked. why it didn't work out. Was no, it, was, it was popular. Socks. No, I'm well, kidding. before those videos, he was, I, before guy. I even I'm knew me. him, he is famous for his watches and his cars. He's, He's a rich guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess so. I mean, he has endless bag syndrome, like a few of the other characters <laughs> in my videos. Damn. EBS claims yeah, no, EBS. I, 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 unfortunately, victim. I'm vaccinated, so. <laughs> um, Damn, but I'm he trying to, get, I'm trying to get infected, dude. I'm vaccinated. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So no, he who, who he was really got, well known got? before who before I knew him. Kwong, the, you know, that's the, oh, right, the dealer, the Vietnamese lit, dude. Bro. Yeah, he is. I post that's the video I posted. Is he the dealer? No, he's not a dealer. He's just like a a bon vivant. Okay. Like, is he patient zero for endless bag syndrome? Yeah, his I think shit so. Is crazy. Yeah, yeah. He re- it really is like non, like never ending, non- right. like really incredible stuff. So he's got like modern Tiffany signed Patek Philippe's and he also has like multiple Paul Newman Daytonas. Crazy. So it's really like across the spectrum. He leaked EBS out of Drippon. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh God! Um, um, he can say that. Are there a lot of people though that are getting into the watch game? Because like obviously enthusiasts, collectors, just these characters, these eccentrics, these kooks, these lovable uh, misfits. Yes. What about like are, are a lot of people in the watch game in it for the wrong reason, which is just flexing how much money they have? Because I do get that kind of icky feeling. Um, I think it's inevitable if you are rich and you collect shit that eventually, like, it will get like. You you know they yeah. probably will start flexing, but I mean like more like the Gen Z kids that are like, oh, I have fifty thousand dollars somehow, and I want to just like be able to show everyone that I have a fifty thousand dollar watch. I, I, it's so funny because I feel like a fifty thousand dollar watch is not even that unusual. Jesus Christ, which, which well, is which, 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 which yeah. is frightening to say. So frightening. But like if I if I'm walking down the street and I see like a twenty five year old wearing a fifty, I don't think twice. Right. You know, like a Royal Oak, like. It is what it is. Like a Royal Oak is probably closer to 50,000 than 20,000. I mean, right. so if like, and you see a lot of Royal you Oaks around. You see a lot. Of surprise, yeah. I guess not that surprisingly. Yeah. When you saw the NFT ship going down in flames, were you cheering from the sidelines? Like, yes, get oh, these fucking It didn't even exist in my brain, to be perfectly honest. Really? Yeah, it didn't. Because that must have affected like the NFTs and watch guys, I feel like. Yeah. They became watch guys, the right? The Yeah, Yacht maybe. Club cooked the books, dude. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, a rising tide raises all ships, but really it's like those dudes were not necessarily buying vintage watches. Right. True. Um, they wanted the bust downs. No, not bust downs either, but you know, just like the hype watches. Yeah, exactly. A Hulk, like you said before, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kermy. Sticking with the content creation, Mm -hmm. I want to know. I really want to know. Yes. Do you do extra maintenance on your wrist because you know it's on camera all the time? No. Like, are you lotioning nothing. up? Are you trimming the wrist hair? Nothing. No. Nope. Raw dog that shit. Raw dog his wrists. (laughs) Yeah. Because there's some people where I'm just like, yo, you need to fucking like trim it back a little bit. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I I get those comments sometimes in it. Uh, on the videos, but no, I don't do anything. You're not going to like refresh the tattoos underneath or anything to make them pop on nope. camera. Interesting. I love, uh, and there's a bunch of these memes floating around, but like a big fat guy with the Rolex oh, and yeah. strangling like the meat paw, dude. Yeah. That's always <laughs> right to the zoo board, yeah. dude. That shit is hilarious. What's bro. funny is on the videos, people, every, every single video, no matter what, people are like, oh, it's way too tight on them. Oh yeah. And even if it's not, it's just like, it's what people do say. Do you have a personal, like, do you like it tight or do you like it loose paws? <laughs> Cause I, my shit is like a little, I, I, mean, don't, I don't mind it a little loose, yeah. mm. but you, then you see some guys where it's like, yo, this is going to fucking slide off your fucking paw, brother. The, the bigger issue is people wearing watches that are too big for them. Oh, just their right. wrists. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like watches that are too big. I mean, that's my problem. I a, a dainty wrist in yeah, myself. Yeah. But right. Yeah. yeah. So what, what is, uh, so then what is like the median, like what's the right size face? 36 millimeter. 36. Damn. I, see, I Damn. see that to me seems like small, but it's not small. No, it's not small. And 36 I'm a size like, queen. Yeah, it's yeah. true. Um, <laughs> Rolex day dates and date just, which were 36 millimeters for 60 years, only started getting bigger in like 2008. Okay. When also oh, like when Jersey Shore came out, so <laughs> oh, that's, what, that's what was going on in the damn. world. The fucking uh, Gorilla Juice heads. Yes, yeah. basically. And then <laughs> they flooded the market. And people now act like, oh, this is the default. Forty or forty-one is but the default. But that be. is humongous, yeah, yeah. and it looks bad on most people. It's like so. It's like a, it's like the SUV. It's like the American SUV. True. Yeah, it's like the Hummer. Yeah. I mean, it's like yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
And you know, H two on the. Wrist. I think people are confused as to how a watch is supposed to fit on a wrist. Yeah, it's not supposed to dominate or cover your entire wrist. Yeah, fucking idiots. Yeah, that's why people are like, oh, this watch is too small. I don't think yeah. like whatever a date just or a date aid in thirty six millimeters is too small for anybody. I don't care who you are. Right. Damn. Because if you are like a big like the rock. pro athlete, it, again, it doesn't. It's not made to cover your entire wrist. Mm. It's not like a gauntlet. It's not like a you know. <laughs> it's not it, armor. Yeah. 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 Shout out Thanos. Do you tuck your watch if you're in an ungentrified neighborhood? Um, I don't really go to those type of neighborhoods. But <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, uh, I don't. But why? Okay, loaded question. Why do fly ass hood dudes fuck yes. with you so heavy? I don't know. We mentioned Hugo. Yeah. Right. Clint, Clint obviously. Like yeah. you're good in any Scar. hood. Mike Nouveau is good in any hood. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Why you. is that? Oh, God, I don't know. I'm just uh, I, Lawrence uh, needs to Lawrence is taking notes right now. Yeah, yeah you yeah. need to learn. I'm gonna take a lot of notes. <laughs> <laughs> I, lot I, of I don't know the answer. Me. No, I, I don't I don't know. Do you have any theories? Is, is no, the, I, don't. Is I think you're just, I think you're just such a nice guy. Like that's what I feel like I'm pretty I'm pretty honest. And you talk shit. I like I love talking shit. I love it. Uh, is it also I love my haters. Is talking shit your number one hobby after watches? No, it's my number one hobby. <laughs> okay, <laughs> straight up. Yeah. <laughs> but also, like, let's be real. Think about, and not to shit on your peers, but think of the other guys in your space. The bar they've set in terms <laughs> of their personalities and what it is like to spend a second <laughs> with these motherfuckers, no pun intended, is horrendous, no? Yeah, I mean, I think that it's interesting. Uh, the, the other difference is like, I'm truly outside right. where a lot of these dudes are like, do, are doing green screen videos from like right. uh, Minneapolis or something field. like that. Yeah. I field. mean, there's only so much you can do with Google image search and mm -hmm. a green screen. Um, yeah. so I think being outside is like extremely important and me actually buying and wearing this stuff every right. single day. It's not just like, you're about it. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty, there's you a lot it. of like watch video dudes who can, don't ever have the watches in their hands Ooh. or on the wrists. Yeah. Capper. Green screen motherfuckers. Yeah, green screen motherfuckers. Same is true with men's fashion too. Yep. Oh yeah, for sure. It's like, yeah. look, I'm going to review these product photos. Yeah, it's you like, ain't I'm, never wear that yeah, shit, yeah, you're boy. right. It's like you're hating from outside the club. Mr. Ooh, Mr. Not yes, put sir. That Mr. Not put that shit on. Yeah. Mr. Never put that shit yeah, on. Never. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Yeah. From, let's play a little game. Okay. From least annoying to most annoying type of guy. Yes. We would like you to rank watch guys, car guys, fashion guys, NFT guys, film guys. That's fine. Okay, NF NFT you. guys are at the bottom, obviously. Yeah. For most, oh, the worst. Yeah. Most annoying. Do most they annoying. Even exist okay. anymore? I can't even imagine. There's got to be some, some. Probably then film guys. Ugh. Ugh. Uh oh. <laughs> um, I'd say probably watching car guys are the same guy. Right. Really? Okay. And then probably, I mean, I'm pretty tolerant of fashion guys. I've been in fashion, not in fashion, but I've been interested in fashion for way longer yeah. than I've been interested you in watches. With a lot of fashion guys. Yeah. I have an entire like friend group, and there was some crossover with watches too. Right. I'm sure that was your influence as well. You know, you're rubbing off. Yeah, and the the person who got me into vintage watches is a guy I met on Style Zeitgeist. Oh, oh wow. wow. Yeah. Shout out Eugene Rabkin. Yeah, shout out Eugene. Do you see like the watch world get infiltrated by other subcultures and are you do you welcome them with open arms or are you a bit wary or do you want to like gatekeep it? No, I'm completely open for anybody who wants to get into watches. I mean, I'll I could hate on these people for other reasons, but not because <laughs> they're they're into watches. Right. Yeah, um, they, they, uh, they make it real easy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, no, I, mean, that. I, I, I certainly, I definitely, I'm definitely a gatekeeper, but not when it comes to watches. I don't think not content, right? Not information, but maybe hmm. like gatekeeping what, like your services and your time in terms of like people reaching out being like, yo, Mike, I, yo, finesse alley-oop, et cetera. Um, I'm more, more of a gatekeeper when it comes to like tagging restaurants on Instagram oh, stories okay. and stuff like that. You're a snob and, that way. Well, or, you're, you're a New Yorker, so it's right. like, that's what it is. Right. But no, I mean, uh, new content creators, I mean, you come and you better come correct Ooh. because like, and well, I don't, I don't, I don't mean, I don't mean like tapping in or paying dues. I mean like, you better know what you're talking about. <laughs> Yo, check in with me when you're in my city. Yeah. yeah. You better <laughs> kiss the wrist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who gets more pussy? DJs yes. at the club or TikTok watch guys? Definitely <laughs> DJs at the club. Do no TikTok doubt. watch guys get pussy? Um, not nearly enough. <laughs> via, do they get it via their content? No. Okay. Definitely not. Well, like there, there's a whole... Uh, I, I could probably count on one hand, on one wrist, <laughs> how many like girls have slid into the DMs. Really? Yeah. So is, is that a sigh up then is, by the watch industry where it's like they convince guys that having like a fly, cool, expensive watch is going to get them attention from women so that they keep buying watches when we all know that it's just going to get you attention from dudes? I think it's a it's, it's like a wealth signifier where it's like the, the woman may or may not care about, oh, you're wearing a 24.99 Patek? <laughs> But if she does, yeah. she's a keeper. Yeah, definitely. Or, or I don't know, maybe not. It could be Yoko Ono, dude. Oh, God. Yeah, bad luck. 
Um, Watch is shiny. <laughs> that's my impression of a woman. <laughs> wow. Okay. Hell Problematic. Yes. Um, okay. So it really is just like, it, I mean, yeah. it's, it's same shit with our, with our guys, right? You, you're not dressing for girls. Like you're dressed like no girls. Are be like, Oh my God. Is that our legacy? <laughs> right. Oh my God. Is it, is that the lad sweater from spring 24? <laughs> it, snow in April. Oh my God. Is that, is that Stussy? <laughs> well, it is. It is. Right? It's, to be like, it's for other dudes to be like, yo, sick fit. Yeah. There's bro. a, there's a fit. There's like a meme where it's like what guys think is going to happen when they wear their Patek and it's oh, like them yeah. surrounded by b- bikini right, babes right, right. and what really happens and you're like in a corner with a bunch of other dudes doing like yeah. wrist, wrist shot photos. Bikini that, babes. <laughs> yeah. That being said, Mike, I would like to know. So Lawrence was taking notes when he asked you why you're always uh, kicking it with like fly hood dudes. Yes. I am going to take notes when I ask you, why are you always surrounded by fat milker mommies and <laughs> how would someone go about doing that for themselves? Yeah. God, Hypothetically. I just surround yourself with things you love and- <laughs> And you know, yeah. <laughs> God, I don't know. It's not, it's not, it's definitely subconscious. <laughs> what definitely. Ta- it's not subconscious. We see it on our phones. I mean, I, I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying it's, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sitting down figuring out how to, how to attract them. I'm, I'm just attracting them, I guess. Wow. You are attracting them. You're not. The okay. universe is, is giving, is providing them. But is it, is it about being outside and being like in the fucking coolest restaurants or is it, it's not the watch. Show. I don't think I even go to the coolest restaurants. I Where really like. Yeah, I, I cook a lot. Right, yeah. <laughs> big stew guy. Yeah, I love stews. Nice. Mm-hmm. What are you? What are you stewing up this season? What's perpetual? Uh, I mean, basically, I just do like chicken. I do chicken soup, chicken stew. Everything from the oysters to the stew are perpetual. Nice. Damn, I see. I could wow. help out with the intro. Yeah. Goddamn. Wow. Anyway, all right, yeah. moving on. Okay. Wait, so. is it, are those uh, are the are the fly honeys? Are they are they uh, a holdover from the DJ club days? I mean, honestly, there's like I, we're we're talking about fantasy here. Like there <laughs> there aren't any. So I, I mean. I, Please, bro. Come on. I've, I've seen I a couple know. of birthday I'm, shout outs in my I'm, time, Okay, brother. listen, I, I, I could be friends with- <laughs> I could be friends with- Hot chicks. Yeah, with- You're right, you can be. Yeah. It's allowed. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you this. Yeah. When it comes to the business of watches, the industry side, we talked about content creation and everything. What's the first thing you would change about the industry? Uh, the industry of content creation? No, 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 watches. Yeah, just the industry first before we go to content. God, that's so tough. Um, just one that's why we're here. off top. You're the you become elected president. You're Mister Watch. watch. Time LLC, <laughs> the fattest cat. Uh, there should be more transparency and just in terms of. I mean, this is nerdy stuff like production. Like you could say it's made in Switzerland if like it's assembled X, or whatever. X amount X percent is is made in Switzerland, but everybody knows that most of it is made oh, we talk, somewhere else. We talking Shinola. Oh, that's, that's, that's not, that's yes, absolutely. Yes. They're oh, that was made one, in USA. one screw right. is well, screwed claim, in, right. that in was Detroit. The whole, hence the John Moy takedown right. heard around the world. Uh, how much would I have to pay you to endorse Shinola? How much would Shinola have to pay you to endorse them? Endorse them with one video or like an ongoing <laughs> to, <laughs> to wear it as an ambassador. Uh, it would honestly, Oh, billboards name and likeness $5 million a year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Okay. So transparency around like production and, Provenance. And, uh, provenance of yeah, I mean watch. just just where stuff is made. Uh, is I'd it love, really shady? Is it really murky? With some brands, it's murky okay. for sure. Anyone uh, you want to call out specifically right now? With, no, with but I mean, but have? I mean, a brand like Rolex, that's one you have less doubts about because they really run everything, and they that, right. you know they have all their own factories in Switzerland. So really, that's easier. That's not even. I'm not even talking about you know it's smaller brands. Right. Okay. Gotcha. Mm. The boutique. But shit. do the smaller brands need to like? Do they need to fucking employ all the dark magic and the tricks to like, I don't know, get their getting their foot in the door? I think it's a big marketing thing for them to say this is made in Switzerland. And if I think the step one of a lot of collectors is like, I'm gonna buy a Swiss watch. Right. Right. I mean, Germany is acceptable, Japan is acceptable, mm-hmm. um, even like England. Um is the USA not acceptable? It's not that it's not acceptable, but there's like no watch brands. I think there's RGM, which is a cool brand in Pennsylvania. What about, what about Brick Watch Co.? <laughs> Love Brick. <laughs> what is your opinion on Brick Watch? Whatever did- happened with that? It was like a week of memes and then I never heard about it again. You guys would know I better than know. me. I, think uh, it, I think it's still going. I'm sure is it exists. It? Yeah, I think it's- He, I, he I, invested I, his Portnoy's money. This is Dave money. Portnoy's watch company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah Brick got, on the wrist. <laughs> it got me a nice week of content about a year ago. Nice. Oh, um, you were shitting all over it? I mean, of course. The same. I mean, who wasn't? Did you ever cop one? I don't even know what it looked like. To review, to review. View. No, it looked okay. like dog shit. Yeah, of course. And I, don't, I honestly don't even think he has fans that stupid to right. to drop whatever. Or, it was like twenty five hundred bucks, it wasn't was absurd. it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know who. Like, I, even the most rabid Portnoy fanboy, mm-hmm. I don't think can he, afford that. You know, definitely, they're definitely living in their mom's basement, so probably right. not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wait. So, business speak. Back to business. What's the best watch to invest in right now? This very second. No pun intended. If you are in it to make money. Okay. Well, I think you're in it for the wrong reasons. And I, I never talk about watches as investments, but I mean, if you can, 
People are like, oh, well, you know, I bought that, I got that, I got the call to buy a Patek at retail and then I sold it for triple. I'm like, okay, that's not an investment. That's a one-time a lucky flip. come up. Yep. Yeah. Um, I, ne I, I never, I really, I truly do not look at this as investing. A lot of people do. A lot of people get dollars and clicks because they're talking about it as investing. Mm. Uh, something that I truly think is undervalued. I still think a seven, 1970s Cartier tank at under $10,000 is under, is undervalued. I think in a few years they could be twenty thousand dollars minimum. Ooh, setting. Uh, Damn, maybe, this is I mean, setting my eBay alerts. I, I think I'm retired I think, early. I think four digit Rolex Datejust at thirty five hundred dollars are very cheap. I mean, in the term in terms of watch collecting, I think that's great value. And you know, God, even even a Rolex Day Date, a vintage Day Date at twelve to thirteen thousand, I think is a great deal. And don't ask for box and papes because it doesn't matter. It yeah. doesn't matter. I mean, listen, it will. People will charge more for it, but right. it doesn't affect the watch in any way. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't affect the Can't watch itself. It doesn't authenticate the watch. Mm. You have to authenticate the watch on its own merits the, and the attributes. Box looks cool, but it doesn't tell time. Definitely yeah, not. You could buy the box on eBay right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can't put it on the wrist. What's, so if someone is looking to get into the watch game as a collector, as a watch wearer, what's the biggest mistake a watch newbie can make that you find? Um, in my world, it would be insisting on box and papers. It would be <laughs> obsessing over a birth year watch. Oh, oh yeah. but that's Which, kind of sentimental, right? No. no. Oh, you don't totally disagree. So full herb novelty. Shit. Oh, herb shit. Yeah, wow, herb birth shit. year wow. herb shit? It's like getting your name tattooed on your back. Damn. <laughs> LeBron? <Yeah>. The king? <laughs> the goat gets a pass, but- What's your worst tat? Do you have your name tattooed on your back? No. Definitely Are you not. fully- Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty fully covered. What's your worst tat? My worst tat? I have a hot dog on my leg. <laughs> nice. How big? How big is the glizzy? Where on your leg? Oh, is it, is it um, <laughs> up high? It's on my ankle. No, okay. it's like it's like a. Uh, are you full like, like two and a half really, inch glizzy? You really are from like uh, my legs are my legs are pretty neck. open. I have a full back tattoo from shoulders to ass, fully covered. What is it, like yakuza a, shit? A, a it, it is Japanese. It's Japanese inspired. Okay. No, yeah, it's, like it's a, a phoenix. Fish. Okay, <laughs> it's the Ben Affleck phoenix yeah. on the ashes. <laughs> How hard was it to fucking put lotion on that shit? I had yeah, I had to get someone else to do it. Nice. Yeah. Had to get one of those fat titty bitches to do it. Yeah. No comment. It was um, a long time ago. Okay, so birth your watch. Big herb shit. That's that, crazy. So many people talk about that. I'm really surprised. Box and papes. Okay, that makes sense. A lot of people talk. I mean, there's a lot of herbs in this world, you know? the the It is. I, it truly is. If you look at how many corny people exist, there's more corny people than, than cool sure. people. <laughs> and is that a Mike Nouveau like take or is that the uh, I'd say of a lot of... There's, there's a few other dealers that would tell you it's... Yeah. It's or bullshit, but you know, it's like, what else is, what there, else is there's, it? there's dealers websites where the first thing you see is click, click here for birth year watches. So it's like, people are making money off this. The marketing tool. Is Absolutely. Your, it's going to birth your watch any, a watch from any year and then you have to go find <laughs> yes, it. But you know, it would it's be a like, filter. Yeah. <laughs> right. But it would be, what's funny is I see them advertise, oh, 1991. This is like the, this is the, the, will be the hot birth year because these people are turning this age and at this age, you're average to be making this amount of money. Wow. Okay. What's your most unpopular watch take? Oh God, I have a lot. Yeah, um, He's made his I'd say that. I'd say the birth year thing is is one of them. Also, really? the other. Going back to that for one second. Yeah, it's like, do you want the year that it was sold? Do you want the year it was manufactured? Because it might have been sitting in the store for three years. Mm. Um, and also the lists of what, for example, the lists of what year Rolexes are from go by serial numbers, and those lists are are put together by fans and collectors, not by Rolex. Mm. So people have kind of there's there's lists that disagree with each other. Right. So you could actually buy a non birth year watch. Totally, when you're on the hunt for that. Absolutely, Fuck damn idiots. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's like we don't we don't buy birth year houses or cars or yeah. no guitars or Check anything or, 19, art or anything like that. Like 1986 Honda Civic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's a birth year. Yeah, it's a birth yeah, year. Exactly. Dude. Don't it's, I don't know why. Like who invented <laughs> it? Whoever invented whoever came up with the concept is a genius. Brilliant right, marketing, right, right. marketing right. for sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so we have a question for you. Yes, kind of based on us because this podcast is really for us and about yeah. us, based on what you know about us and our personalities yes. and our friendships. I have a watch. Okay. I never wear it. Okay. Um, I kind of bought it as a joke. Um, if I were to decide that I want to uh, get my first real watch, yeah. what would that watch be? And then knowing what you know about Lawrence, what should his next watch be? Do you have a budget? Yeah. like Nothing crazy. But nothing like, crazy. I mean, but like know. probably f under five figures. Okay. Under five figures. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. What? Yes. <laughs> No, I thought you were going to say under like 5,000 or under 500. You said under five Let's figures. say five, let's say around 5,000. Okay, I would tell you to get a vintage Rolex Datejust. Okay. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Again, what, for the investment opportunity? No, because oh. I never suggest 
watches as investments. Right. Okay. But I just think it's a lot of bang for your buck. It's an icon. You could be a billionaire and be you, there's billionaires wearing Rolex Datejust. So it's you know it's not. I shouldn't get that trippy Cartier one. Which one? The one that's like melted. The crash. If you if you up the budget by five hundred x maybe. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, those are not to be trifled with, my Damn. friend. Yeah, yeah. That was something that I had my on like a few years ago. I was just like, <laughs> no, I'm serious. They're like, oh, this is a really funny, like interesting thing, and it was not that price. But this is. Like, I sold one today, well, actually. How much? One hundred fifty thousand dollars. Holy fucking shit, brother! Yeah, I swear to God, I could show you the wire. No, no yeah. I believe you. Um, this diet, why aren't you buying us diet Pepsi's? Well, it's not like it's one hundred fifty thousand net profit what no do you, no no what do, you, what do you net off 150 yeah. thousand can you, say, can you kind of give us a, a, an idea um on that one i will make probably ten thousand dollars okay so you shelled out 140 at some point well the way it works <laughs> please tell us is n- this is just one way that it can work if one so, were to in- use some, watches as yeah. investments no, this is not new investment. <laughs> you want to know the business, the, how the yeah. business right. works. Right, right, right. I'm in a lucky position where if I needed somebody to finance a watch, there's probably a hundred people I can line up to do it because I have a track record and and they get points. But yeah, you you could you partner on watches. There are many big watches that have many partners. Got it. And if I find a watch, say I find a Patek Philippe 2499, and it's two hundred thousand dollars, and I know we could sell it for five hundred thousand dollars, there's about a thousand people who would give me that two hundred thousand dollars, knowing for the opportunity to yes, get in bed with you. Got d- it. Definitely not, not, not just because of me, because of the watch. Your network is your net worth. Exactly right. Are you going to bang our line and let us get in on this? Yeah, I can give you. I can give, right. give you a couple points. And then next time I come, Dude, let's go. When baby. I see a Sh- big, Shinola, that talking, might be we talking about the underpriced. Yeah, we're talking big okay uh, so, so anyway back to the crash yeah, so basically bling. basically someone will hit me up and say i have this crash i need this for it okay and then someone hits me up and says i'm looking for a crash okay this person that i've worked with a million times before and we have a good working relationship has a crash he has it for 140 i can sell it to you for 150 and if you're interested tell me i will tell the first guy to hold the watch mm-hmm. i have a potential client you wire me the money i wire them well, it's legit. I mean, I guess so describing these, that you make these sales without ever even touching. No, no I, I will. Add, I mean, you got to look at the watch. Yeah, and verify it. Right? it. Oh, yeah, okay. I mean, that definitely. I want it in my hands. Also, yeah. I'm reluctant to do deals like that without people want to because you'll have owners of these watches who are not dealers sending me watches and saying, "Hey, can you sell this? It's rare." And I say, "Yes, it is rare, but I'm not selling this unless it's in my hand." Right. For a variety of reasons. Actually, the most annoying is them just changing their mind. Right. So if I get a wire from somebody uh, and they're like, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to no sell take it. Back if it was a dealer, they would be blacklisted. Right. But a regular do person- They don't give a fuck. Yeah, they don't care. Right. And it happens and it's very annoying. So I will not, like I need, and they need to send me the watch first. So if not, you found me somewhere, right. like you're contacting me for a reason, you're sending me the watch first. And if yeah, like yeah, yeah. my my collateral is my, you know, my network, your my reputation. following, my everything, everything that I have yeah. is my collateral. So you're what, a dot connector. Sort of. What's the largest amount of money you've made in a sale? Gross. Um, God, it's hard to say. Um, there's been like, there was one that I did and the, the, the perception of, of how this works is really funny. I, I found a watch um, in like a store in Connecticut. And it wasn't even like, it wasn't like a mom and pop. It was kind of like a chain jewelry store mm-hmm. and they had a bunch of vintage watches and most of them are extremely overpriced mm-hmm. as most of the time at a brick and mortar, you're gonna, that's where you're gonna find the highest pricing. There was one really, really undervalued or just mispriced Audemars Piguet that I bought for like 17,000. I think it sold for 90. Woo! But you know, I was partnered with Craft and, and Taylor. you didn't care about fleecing the mom and pop shop? Again, it wasn't a mom and pop shop. Oh, sorry. It changed. You were, yeah. You that's what, oh, that's, okay. okay so it. I'm pointing that out specifically because even in the comments, because I made a video and like the person, the, the salesperson is like in the video and people in the comments are like, you ripped this woman off. <laughs> I was like, this is like an hourly employee. Yeah, right. She's she doesn't fuck. own this watch. Yeah. She like works for this like corporate jewelry store and somebody mispriced this and like, Damn. no, I don't feel... It, it wouldn't happen with a mom and pop. It wouldn't happen with like a war widow or like, <laughs> or, or, or like someone who inherited yeah. it, it, like this I is smuggled this watch back in my ass from Vietnam. Totally. Yeah. It, it, not a Christopher Walken situation. It's <laughs> like a corporate, but it's funny, even at like a corporate store, people were still like, you ripped these people off. I ripped off this corporation. It's like, Oh, I ripped off Victimless like most crime. Yeah. Yeah. Like, really, truly. But what's the, okay. So that's the largest like Delta in terms no, of like, I don't you know know if that's the like, largest, so that's just one that comes to okay. mind. And the All whole right. thing was on video. Right. So right. I got a lot of comments. Are watches that are smuggled out of war zones up people's asses. Does that make them more valuable? <laughs> it's or less called valuable? provenance, baby. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But something we look for. Them. <laughs> from the yeah. butt County. Yeah. I mean, you, that's one of the times you can use a uh, scent to authenticate. Oh, <laughs> nice. You ever had to brush some fucking feces off a of dial? I, I mean, you, we have to clean them sometimes. It would be a condom, dude, or something, right? You're not just going to have a watch floating around your ass. I'm asking the man himself, right? 
he knows what he's talking about. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Which, trust, it would be in a condom. Sucking shit up people's asses. All right. Oh, and what should Lawrence's next watch be? Yeah. Oh, well, what was yours? Oh, the date just. Yeah, the date just. Let's, sorry, say I'm gonna, let's say, keep this in mind too. I'm going to sell, I'm going to use the seed dweller to, to I'm going to flip it so that could like maybe beef up my budget. A bit. Okay. So you, you're one step ahead of him because you're already, you're already a Rolex bro. Yeah. So you've already gone through that. You've got it out of your system. Eh. Now, now we can get you a real watch. I, eh. Wait, I don't want to be a Rolex bro. Well, you're buying a Rolex Datejust. Yeah, it's already, yeah, but, it's been decided. But I don't want that. But at least it's, it's been vintage. decided. At least but it's I don't vintage. want it. I don't want it. Okay. Listen, well, uh, you asked. I want that Yager. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we, so he's, so he's, are you going to tell him to level up out of Rolex? Yeah. What is some, okay. So what am I doing? Okay. So God, it could be, this is a little tricky because like the next step is kind of like a lot more money. Well, how much is a lot more? Well, what do you, what do we think we're getting for this thing? <laughs> Fucking at this point, bro. When I talk to you Six about grand. this. Six um, grand. Could we get eight? No. Dealer chats were dry on the seed dweller. 2000. There's a reason for that. Yeah, I know. A 2004. I don't know if that matters. Yeah, probably let's say let's say six is a, Jesus is a safe, Christ, safe number. I mean, it's hard to see the next step from here. You can go many different ways. You can go sports watch, dress watch. You can get a- I'm, You're a spear guiding me, so you tell me. So, okay, I'm getting six. I have a similar budget. I'd like to see you in a dress watch. Okay. Maybe a cool brigade. So if I what'd was- you, spend, What'd you call them? <laughs> so let's say I have 16 grand. 16 grand, yeah. We can get you into a brigade. We can get you into, I mean, Cartier is, is a- is a certain taste level. Ooh, that Lawrence doesn't have? No, I'm not saying that. Okay. I'm, no, saying I'm, it's, it's, like above, I'm above that is what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. He's too advanced for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I mean, for let's just say for 16000 you could do a lot. That's a lot of money for a watch. If you had sixteen tomorrow to buy a watch for yourself, what are we getting? For me, it would probably be a Cartier because I'm pretty obsessed. Okay. But you could buy, God, this is tricky. You could buy maybe a red sub, like a vintage red sub. You'd be, so go back 16 to the Rolex, little, bro. Vintage though. Yeah. Which is, I mean, that one's not super new. No, you got holes <laughs> in the case. I'm peeping your holes. Oh, yeah, yeah, is that really. Yeah, is that that peeper? yeah, no, it's good. No, oh. it, it's not good or bad. It's just, it, oh, okay. it tells me that Damn, I got holes in my case. Damn, yeah, bro. what the fuck? <laughs> okay, so you kind of putting me on the Rolex bro path or the Breguet path. I don't, I'm just giving options. You could do Cartier as well. <clears throat> I mean, Breguet on the Breguet on the wrist, eh, I could work that in. We can make it you work. Could do a, you could do an, an Omega Speedmaster, but that's kind of like <laughs> no. a lateral move. No, nah, dude, my dad's an Omega guy. <laughs> yeah. Omega, no, that's how like British people say it. Oh, so I can do it. I'm just like being Omega a douchebag. No, it's Omega. Omega. Omega, it's Omega. Okay, all right. Well, it's thanks like for I guess, when the Europeans say Nike, yeah. Oh, okay. Jaguar, Jaguar, -y. right? Jaguar, Jaguar. -y. What's the most? What's the most you've ever spent on a watch for yourself? Is it not this? that much? Um, let me think. Yeah, it might, I think it is this, and it really wasn't. I mean, for someone who dedicates their entire life right. to watches for the last X amount of years, it's really not that much. I paid twelve thousand dollars for this. Woo! Why did you get such a deal? Did someone do a favor for you? Did they not no, know what they had? Or? They, it, it, the elements of not knowing what they had, but not in like a- um, Fleece and what? Yeah. The, this person I got it from, and they're in the video. Yeah. Um, they're a, mid, a professional middleman. They are a <laughs> volume mover. Mm -hmm. Burn uh, and churn. Yeah. They find a watch, they sell it. They do not have the ability or resources to market it and research it and authenticate it. So they that's don't have, what I they do. They clout. No, it's nothing to do with clarity followers. It, it's, it's, it, <laughs> this is like a real, this is beyond researching stuff like this. It's way harder than even Rolex or anything like that. So this guy knows I like vintage Cartier, which is really the main benefit of these videos is people come out of the woodwork to offer me stuff and buying the watches is, and finding the watches is the most difficult part of the business. Mm -hmm. Because if you find again, a 2499 from Patek, there's 5,000 people that will buy that Right now, it doesn't matter who you are or what you know. Yeah. Mm. Um, so this person's a, a, a middleman, found the watch, contacted me, knew I loved it. I said, wait right there. Do not show this to anybody else. <laughs> and then I went up, in a, a Diamond District guy, nice. and he's like, what do you want for it? And we negotiated a little bit. I think he wanted 13. I ended up giving him 12. And that's Done. that. He was perfectly happy. And uh, even after like he kind of saw that auction where it went for 60 grand, he was like, yeah, let's do more business together. Wow. He, he wasn't that's bothered. what he does. Yeah. That, that's what, that's what a lot of the dudes on the block on 47th street do. They're not, my, my game is quality. Their game is volume. Got mm. it. What's, uh, what are your tips for haggling? Um, let's see. You never say the first number. I know. Oh God. I, I almost never say the first number unless it's a watch that I'm completely desperate for. I see it's a, it's a tricky game. 
because somebody offered me a watch the other day and they said, I want $20,000 for this. And in my head, I'm thinking, fuck, that's a good deal. But still, I couldn't help myself and say, I'll give you 15. <laughs> right, right. Did you end up blowing it? I fucking blew it. Wow. I fucking blew you it so hard. The sun. Yeah, yeah. Like they walked away. They're like, fuck you. No, even worse. Even worse than walking away. They're like, okay, let me, I'll, I'll come back to you. And I was like, actually, uh, let's, uh, you know. Oh, whoa, whoa, you showed whoa. your hand immediately. Yeah. I, I, they fucking totally called my bluff. And then like a day later, I, like, I talked to some dudes from Switzerland. They said it's worth way more. Damn. I was like, fuck, I really blew it. So you blew it. Damn, Damn. dude. What's the most money you've lost on a watch purchase? Oh. None. Really? You've uh, always well, ended I, up in the black. So basically, the other thing is I was, I've, I'm was i only an independent watch dealer for about the last 10 days because I was with oh. I was with a company. <laughs> yeah, Craft & Taylor. Okay, yeah, right, I was yeah. with Craft & Taylor from the very beginning up until about Wait, 10, 10, day, 10 days. <laughs> yeah, at the Miami Beach Antique Show. We, we like had a chat parted and we ways. kind of parted ways. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah. yeah good but, for you, bro. Thank you. I mean, peacefully, we're still on good terms. And I will still. Yeah, yeah. No one's out here saying fucked Craft and Taylor. No, definitely not. I will well, absolutely. It did just get said. Thank though. you. Great. Great. Great <laughs> sound clip. But no, I will absolutely <laughs> still do business with them, and they'd still be on top of my the top of my list okay. in terms of partnering for right. watches. But I'm now fully independent, and I didn't. I, I had a good deal with them, and I didn't really. There was no possibility of like personal loss. But typically, even they don't really take many L's. It's true. It's like, you know, we they, we bought very carefully. There were three of us that would kind of have to agree before yeah, we bought a watch. Right. Try over it. Yeah, basically, yes. Um, well, here's a question to James's point about the clout. Has anyone come to you to try to like, you know, f like give you a deal because of the clout you can provide and have you sold like, quote unquote, airtime on the TikTok because like people want juice and they want to get out there and they know you're a first step and they've given you like a deal in exchange for like this kind of more amorphous thing not really i mean i wouldn't say they've given me deals because of that there's definitely people who want to be on the videos and it does <laughs> it does come with like s some exposure for sure absolutely um, it does. It actually does. I mean, I, it's I like they show up on to be on your TikTok and they're like they're wearing a totally different fit from what they would normally wear. Yeah, on yeah. any given day. Yeah, <laughs> no, I can't relate. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, they bust out the Namin Chaco <laughs> jeans. <laughs> I wear these a lot. There's a lot of pictures. Oh yeah, of me totally, bro. We believe you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, let me just peel back. Sorry, the sorry. I just tried to step it up for a special occasion. <laughs> yeah. me, me appearing on the only podcast that matters. That's true. Let me, let me peel back the junior real quick. Yeah. No, but do people are like, oh, I want to deal with Mike because they it will help me get my name and my business out there. No, I think the people, same way that you get your name and your business being out there all these opportunities come to you. Um, I, I, I wouldn't say they're offering deals because of that. Okay. I'll say maybe they'll befriend me or be nice to me because oh. of that. No, I mean, not what in a, a bad way. Yeah. Not in a bad and way. That's how we get the mommy milkers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't think anyone's like, okay, I will give this, I will give Mike this watch for less than what I paid just so I can get on the TikTok. I don't think that really mm. helps them much either. People don't want to like watch themselves getting. Oh getting, yeah. Getting, getting, like, yeah. Oh, look at this. Look at this bozo. Yeah. Dude, yeah. this fucking idiot. Yeah. I, guess I ever right. want to do business that with makes him. sense. <laughs> um, let me ask you this. Yes. Where is the best place to buy watches in the world right now? Okay. City so, or country? What are we asking? Well, well uh, so, oh, sorry. Your mouth. so people ask me that all the time. And the real question is on the internet. People, people <laughs> with will real answers your, on the internet. The, sorry. The real answer is on the internet. Okay. There is no, there are no reliable brick and mortar watch shops, vintage watch shops in really? this country that I would ever vouch for. Damn. And that's where you are most likely to get screwed. And there's just not that many of them. So I'm not like even talking like on, shit even about like 47th them. street. That's the place you will get screwed the easiest. <laughs> oh wow. That is the worst place to buy a watch. And lube you up, no dude. doubt. Yeah. You will be, they will spot you from a fucking mile away. Yeah. Look, look at this rube. Do, yeah. do, 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 do. I'm look, here for a watch. Look at yeah. look at this mark with his okay, with the right. holes yeah. in his yeah. case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're gonna talk about that off fucking mic. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but the, the entire business is online and some people will send me DMs like, hey, I, can you really help me? Uh, what are the best vintage watch shops in Detroit? As if there's like 40 of them. There are none. <laughs> and if there are, they're probably ready to, you know, yeah. the pricing's probably probably insane. There's no, there's not really a scenario. You didn't mention Icebox in Atlanta, which I feel like. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't really know about their, <laughs> their offerings. Um, well, not like Japan or Switzerland. Ja okay. Or so, London so or in terms of seeing the best market in the world is Hong Kong. Okay. Oh shit. Japan is also very good. Pricing is very high in Japan. Hong Kong is closer to New York in terms of it's truly like a business. Whereas in Japan, there's just insane collectors. So there's good stock. Um, I'd say it's Hong Kong, New York, Geneva. We don't say insane, Tokyo. We say autistic. Auti oh, acoustic. Acoustic. Yes, acoustic. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So there's no, I get this question more than any other question. They're like, oh, but I want to try the watch on first. I'm like, okay, well, then you're going to buy either the worst crap that happens to be sitting within five miles of you. <laughs> right. Or I, I, I really don't know what to tell you. There's right. not like a great 
solution. Got to be. A, is there not a virtual try on app for watches? Yeah, I'm sure there are, yeah. but it's not. The, you know, it's not. Right, the, it's right, not the same thing. Right. And yes, there are shops that have vintage watches. The pricing will probably be very high, and the person selling it to you may or may not know what they're talking about. Right. Um, but the business is online a hundred percent. And if you're limited, if you're saying I need to buy a vintage watch, it has to be this from th from this birth year. It has to have box of papers. It has to be five five miles within Albuquerque, <laughs> then like, what are you going to find? It doesn't yeah. exist. <laughs> yeah. So turquoise shit. Yeah. yeah. Which turquoise you know, meth, dude, blue magic. Well, okay. What, when, what in the, in the watch world with yes. watch guys, besides rocking blood diamonds, what's like a red flag that will tip you off that someone is like a cornball or a fucking noob or doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. Besides the fact that they, our watch guy. <laughs> um, I has, I mean, there's someone in my DMS who, who will just be like, uh, really obviously drop like superfluous information about just to, just so they could really be like, I really, really know what I'm talking about. But in doing that, I I'm thinking you don't know what you're talking about because you just Google this and now you're regurgitating the stuff and pasting that yeah. no one would yeah. ever really talk the about. Lady doth protest too yeah, much. Exactly. Okay. So that's like, so over. So as a tip for someone who's like getting into watches and they're maybe having conversations with other watch guys, like, don't be a fucking total nerd. Yeah, I, I'd rather someone. I'd rather some someone come at me like very earnestly, and that's how I still. When I, I'm still learning now, I still learn every day, right. and I will approach other dealers and scholars, watch scholars and experts, you know, hat in hand, not flexing my knowledge. You know, very like yeah. I, I want to know about this. Please tell me what you know, or please, you know, I have a question. Is, yeah, is it a tough role to break into, or besides yourself, like are people generally friendly and kind of like looking to pass on the information, like the next generation? I think it, it's one, it's both. Um, the, again, the hardest part is finding the watches. If you happen to have some knack, okay. Say say your grandfather dies and leaves you ten RP. rare Patek Philippe's. You, <laughs> you will cross. You will suddenly become a very popular figure. <laughs> What's up, man? You want to come out? Yeah. Oh, dude. So really, it all it takes is the watches. There are some yeah. dealers out there. The death. <laughs> yeah, there are some dealers out there who have been in lawsuits, have been sued, who've been to jail, but they're all and people together? still work okay. with them. Right. And the reason is if they get the right watch that you need, mm. they will do business with you. Yeah. The other thing is like, in terms of like, well, people, people are like, would you buy from eBay? Do you trust Chrono 24? I don't trust- Bob's watches? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Bob's is fine, but I mean, I you know, it's not about no authenticity service is going to help you. You have to judge the watch for yourself. Mm. There's a million ways to get around the authenticity thing. Okay. Like, oh, this watch, oh yes, this watch is 100% Authentic Rolex. However, the case is from 1960. Right. The dial is from 1990. The hands are from 2023. Gotcha. And that's a worthless watch to a collector, but you can still say it's 100% Rolex and it would make it through eBay's quote unquote authenticity guarantee, gotcha. which I have a lot. To, another, Ooh, really? I can talk about see that. Clearly, yeah. Um, With all the money in the watch world, is there a lot more? Have you seen a huge rise in like scammers and flim flam and like people? There's a lot of flim flam, not so much sca scammer. It would be hard to scam someone who has more than like one week's worth of knowledge. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like literally born yesterday. Really. I mean, like, you, probably it's easier to just straight up wire fraud, be like, send me the money, I'll send you that, just or, not or send it. That'd be the easiest way to do them it. And steal a watch off their wrist. That, you could also do that. Yeah. Is there ever any fucking violence going? Are you ever scrapping over wristicles? Um, not knock on wood, but no. Okay. okay. Um, if you you hear you hear stories, but have you like like robbery, like literally like a guy wearing a great watch out, and then like someone spotting that and like jacking a motherfucker? Yeah, I mean, I think like it, again, it's like kind of clickbaity fear mongering stuff yep. where it's like, oh, I heard New York's so dangerous. Oh, Why? Because right. one Fox guy yeah, got yeah, yeah. robbed and it happened to be on camera three years ago. Sure. And it's J. Been J. Crew on, shut down in San Francisco. Don't wear your watch. Yeah, out. exactly. <laughs> R.I.P. J. Crew ba on Bowery. Let's yeah, go. Well, they're too. just moving. I think they're just moving. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, settle a gentleman's bet for me and James, and I won't say who feels which way about this. Okay. When Mike Nouveau sees someone wearing an Apple Watch, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Nothing. It's I mean, Fuck. Not, really nothing. I don't think anything. Is that? I, I, don't, is, think about, that, I don't think about you at all. Yeah, right. Right. So right. is that even more? Is that even worse than like uh, Apple Watch cornball? The fact that you don't even register them as a no. I really human don't even being. see it as like as, I see it as it's an accessory. Yeah. yeah, it's not a watch. Okay. No. All right. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I, don't, I don't even see it at all. I thought it was a big. I thought watch guys and maybe. This is true, and but not true for you. It's like I thought watch guys like really poo pooed and looked down upon Apple. Watch no, not players. at all. Okay. I, I don't think so. And, and I, I have there's plenty of watch guys who also have an Apple watch. Maybe it's just me because I'm a snob. Yeah, you yeah, are a snob. Think, who was I born yesterday with yeah. holes in his case. No, the whole, the whole, that's a good thing. The, the whole, okay, that's yeah. good. It's good. Okay, yeah, yeah. Wait, hold on. Having holes in your watch is a good thing. What does it make it more aerodynamic? Like, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I, I'm just saying in Speed Rolex, holes. it just represents a certain era. It, oh, it makes me know oh, it's from the whole era, the Courtney Love era. But, but you know, it also could also tell you if it's a polished or unpolished watch. Unpolished, it's unpolished. Eh. Please Damn. do. Well, yeah. Okay. All right. Debatable. Do you like that watch? 
It's fine. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, rated, rated, rated out of 10. I, I featured that video. That, that I know, I'm, not, I'm on Nouveau shit, dude. I got fucking good reviews, dude. When we first met, when Isaac was like, you should meet this guy. No, like, Jeremy. What do you think about my Oh, watch? Jeremy Kirk. Shout yeah, out Jeremy Kirk. Shout out Jeremy. What do we got here? Uh, a little Seiko. A little Seiko. Yeah. yeah Turns cool. your wrist green. Turn my wrist green in yeah, Italy. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it looks like it's painted gold. <laughs> yeah. But great deal. 10 bucks. Oh, you should have asked him how you much o- you overpaid. Oh, <laughs> I overpaid? Yeah, you overpaid. Frank from Intramural. Frank. <laughs> you're uh, not from Intramural. Frank from fucking Legends Center. You're yeah. on notice. The, uh, Love the you, mad Frank. dog is Shout rad. out, Frank. Yeah. Wait, you don't fuck with this though? Just the aesthetic? No, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Uh, In Italy. Yeah, no, I love Put it. Put it on. Put it on. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it looks right put it on. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want to touch my skin. It'll turn no, it green. Yeah. No photos. No photos. Yeah. So, who, in your opinion, out there in the world has yes. the best watch collection? And it doesn't have to be. You can just name anyone, and then tell us about that person. Okay. Yeah, it's not going to be people that anyone. I mean, that only watch nerds will so know them. Mr. Smith, like yeah, John you, Goldberger. Who's oh that? my God, who's that? The Berg dude. Yeah, yeah. The Berg sir. Yeah. He's an. Uh, he's an Italian dude. Oh, yeah. not Jewish. Interesting. Actually, it's not his real name. Oh. His real name is Oro Montanari. <laughs> Okay, Mark. that's Italian. Yeah. Also, there's Jewish people in, in Italy. So, yeah. Goldberger. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so John. So he's uh, an older gentleman. Has written books. He on was, watches. He, yeah, on, on watches, vintage okay. watches. He's kind of a like a scholar. He's been buying watches, interesting watches, since like the '70s, and mm-hmm. he has oh, just incredible, incredible, insane, unbelievable one of one watches. What are we talking about? Like how many? Do you think he has like hundreds? Uh, yeah, thousands? hundreds, okay. low low hundreds. I'd say. Yeah. I'm I'm sure it's a collection of millions and millions and millions of dollars. Yeah. Have you met the goat? Yeah, I've met him a few times. He's an amazing oh, yeah? dude. Yeah, he fucks with you. Uh, I'd like to think so. Does he follow you on TikTok? Uh, no, his, on Instagram he does. Do you okay. have his phone number? Yes, I do have his phone number. Okay. Yeah. Are right. you in his will for when he dies? Uh, what a dream that would be. That that I mean. Does he have kids? I don't know actually. Dude. Maybe maybe he does. Dude, get in there. Someone oh. needs to. You should ma- you should be married this guy for sure. Get God forbid. Will. Yeah. Hope he lives to a hundred. All right. Here, just real rapid fire. I'm gonna name some people, like some celebs that are known for having good watches. Just gut reaction. John Mayer. What's his collection like? Insane, but I don't care about it. Okay. Ed Sheeran. Why don't you care about it? Okay, well, okay. Uh, it's just like so like overblown. It's like everyone knows about it. Everyone's on a video. He's like the ultimate point of reference for any celebrity with watches. He is one thousand percent ultra educated on watches. He has incredible watches. It just like. I, don't, I never dick. need to hear about him again. Okay. Do you don't like his G-Shock? And I, it doesn't register. Okay. okay. Uh, Ed Sheeran. Cool watches, mostly modern. Uh, again, it's like he's he's a celeb who like fucks with the watch community. Right. So he's like- On Hodinky. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's on, yeah, he's, he's on, on Hodinky. You're on Dinky. his Hodinky. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What do you think about uh, Champagne Poppy and his new vintage watch kind of obsession? I think he has great taste in watches. Oh. I like when any- like uh, somebody with that much money and that much fame, like fucks with vintage. I, right. li- I like that a lot. I think he has good taste. Um, yeah. And I have a funny story. I don't know if I should tell it though. Uh, you should tell it. <laughs> I mean, is it about the watch on the take care album cover? I, I know I, that funny story as well. Did I tell you that? Or do we no, know about I, well, that? Jeremy told me that. Story. Yeah, yeah. But we don't, I don't well, know what we can say. both got to tell it. Well, I don't know. Like, well, what do you, yeah. What do you, can you maybe say it so that we don't have to cut it in a way? Yeah, I mean, the, the, which 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 story? Which the one, one that you were going to tell? Not the take care album cover. So that, basically, yeah. so like a year ago, Drake posted. God, I don't even remember the specific watch. It, just a literally, just like a quick snap of a gold Paul Newman Daytona on his wrist on his Instagram stories. Literally, just like pick up, click, post. Sick. So I did a screenshot because he had just posted it, and mm. usually when someone like that posts a, posts a, a watch, ten thousand people send it to me. So I did a great like I. Screenshot, did a green screen and said, this is why this watch is important. Value is between half a million and 600,000, <sighs> blah, blah, blah. Post it. 15 minutes later, I get a DM from somebody <clears throat> and it was a, it was a, I, I, I could tell by their account that this was someone legit. An, aff- an affiliate. Yeah, definitely an affiliate. OVO affiliated. Yep. Yep. OVO adjacent for sure. <laughs> yeah. Al in the profile pic. <laughs> yep. Uh, no, 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 definitely not. It was OB but, O'Brien. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, so and he's like, hey, can I give you a call real quick? Oh, Ooh, okay. Just like out, out, from nothing to that. I was like, uh-oh. Yeah. He so I gave my number. He calls me. He goes, hey, so I'm like Drake's guy. Watch guy? Or just- Like the- one of his guys. Okay. Um, he wants to know why that watch that he just paid a million dollars for, <gasps> you just posted was worth half a million. Whoa. Oh, and I was like, oh shit, because now I don't know who sold it to right. him. Could and be you. someone you know, <laughs> Yes. Right? Yeah. So now it's like, uh, now it's like, uh-oh. Now you're stuck in a, you know? Yeah, a little, little quagmire. Yeah, for yeah. sure. A pickle. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> I, I think they mentioned that it got him from Miami, so I call a dealer colleague in Miami. I tell him this, he goes, I'll call you back in five minutes. <laughs> he calls me back. He's like, okay, it came from these people who are not 
who are like are diamond good, dudes. Good, oh, are they okay. Good people. They're not, they're not thought of in the vintage watch community. Right. Okay. Um, and so, so they got it from this person. They got it from a very legit dealer. Huh? A very legit vintage. Dealer. These watches are only going to come from right, right. The, the or they're so going to yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Um, and they basically doubled the price, I guess, and sold it to Drake. Whew. Well, Again, that's... to be fair, they can ask whatever they want for the watch, right. and if they can get the price, then they can get the price. Yeah. The problem is, I just said it was worth half of what they paid. Right, exactly. The other problem was nobody had paid anybody else yet. <gasps> oh, so shit. the original very respected dealer sold it to these guys in Miami without a, without a wire, kind of just on memo. They sent it to Drake and Drake hadn't paid yet. Oh my God, dude. So and now, well, Drake's actually in a good situation. Yeah, for sure. Because all he has to do is put the thing in a box and send it back, which is exactly what he did. Wow, dude. Yeah, and I think he, I think the Miami dudes maybe had to pay like a hefty restocking fee. Damn. And then, but I did say, just so you know, this watch is right as rain. Like this watch, like if you really don't, like if it's, unless it's that big of a deal for him, just hold on to it because it will be worth a right. million dollars. So like, do you know how it all, all wrapped up? I believe, I believe the... The guys that sold to him and sent it back to the original, oh, very legitimate wow. dealer, and they had to pay like a restocking fee. And like, damn, you cost some people some money, it, it, Mikey. It wasn't. It wasn't Don't intentional. Show your face in Miami, bro. Yo, for real, dude. You might have a fucking stay off, Col on you. stay off Collins Ab. <laughs> did uh, <laughs> stay out of Winwood. Yeah. Did uh, <laughs> did Drake ever show you his appreciation yeah. for saving him five hundred thousand dollars? Um, no, but I've had three different people tell me that he is watching at least Fuck yeah, who dude. watches the Watchman? well the guy who dm me who now i am friendly with nice yep. um drake interested in this you think <laughs> no that's i don't know if that's a drake watch i don't know if that's gonna make it across the, the border drake into canada like 20 dollars for a watch worth 10 you gotta <laughs> let the proper authorities know this is bullshit um so who, who else who else mentioned something oh and the other thing is so i shot that dude you know kai yeah of course Kai Shao Kai, I shot him for a watch botting and Drake reposted a screenshot oh, shit. on his story with the dialed in text, oh. but my name wasn't, was oh, not on it at all. Damn, you got not out. Yeah, not nothing, even, no not text or nothing. You were not dialed in. Kai yeah. was dialed in. You were, Kai, you were Kai dialed in. You were perpetually dialed in. You were dialed in. You were cropped out. Yeah. I was, I was cropped out, but a million people sent me and it was pretty funny to see. Right. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's still, it's still you, right? Like it's a feather in your cap. Yeah. And I want to do the, I want to do the, the, uh, the the Drake watch oh, body. I mean, that, that'd be on, great. Bro, like that'd be all time. Like the the so slide into my DMs like Bobby uh yeah, what's your name? Or yeah, whatever, like, yeah. yeah, I need the Bobby Altoff treatment. Pretty savvy. Like I wouldn't be surprised if somehow this is like a manifestation at which point then you owe us just like Drake owes you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, You're right. Drake, I will the, owe you. The Drake yeah. glazing hour has come to an end. <laughs> oh, uh, no. you love Drake. Yeah, I was listening, I, to, I was listening, I, I listening to the- It's embarrassing, actually. The last him, episode, you were really glazing I, hard. I mean, you were drooling. I typically yeah. spin on it with no hands, but yeah. he's yeah. my guy, dude. I, he's I going also- to, He's I, going to Simone, Simone Biles on it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, whoa. I do. I, I respect Drake. Is celebrity stuff, like, is that viral bait on TikTok? Like, is that what goes off the hardest? Besides, you said that the negative hate shit goes crazy. What else goes, like- yeah, hard for you celebrity on stuff. Tiki -taki. Celebrity stuff, as you could guess, goes hard for sure. Where it's like this is what Timote was wearing at the fucking Willy Wonka. Yeah, unfor <laughs> un unfortunately, that does really well. Really? I thought you meant when I have an actual celeb on both, both. I yeah, mean, I mean, like if I if I'm with a celeb, which doesn't happen that frequently, people fucking love it. Willy with the Millie, dude. Yeah, yeah. what but, tends and what tends to brick. The watch spotting videos, the, the regular watch spotting videos, typically, which is what I started with, don't perform super well anymore. Really? Even if it's some like fucking hilarious co host of a no, podcast? No, I mean, some, some, I, I awesome mean so, sometimes. And handsome, I mean, and yeah, if that, if that person you're describing. Javos? <laughs> yeah, Javos. Javos has that, fire watch spottings. I love Javos. Javos, I think we've only done one video and I think it hit a million. Oh, yeah. I mean, his shit yeah, was Yeah, because awesome. he looked like uh, just, he looked, well, he is a Greek god. Yeah, Wayne he, Newton, dude. Yeah, <laughs> true, yeah. <laughs> Um, we need to do a fucking follicle spotting. With yeah, him. for whatever. For real, I, I think I think the celebrity stuff is just ultra consumable and like easy for the for you page. It's not the most fun, and it's not like I don't, I don't feel like uh, right. I, I you know I'm honoring the watch community by yeah. doing it, but I mean uh, you know oh, I have I, to post every single day. Right. Let me let me ask real quick before we get back to the real run of show. One more childish question: the Travis Scott AP shit. Yeah. Do you actually? I know you went to the shit. Yep. And like it's obviously content for you doing your job. Like, what do we actually think of that collab? <laughs> Um, I think it's kind of funny. I mean, I don't hate it's it. It's crazy that it happened, right? It's like, crazy that it's happened. It's crazy that it, that, that it's a, what we call a QP, a Conti M perpetual, like okay. that, like a watch. A Conti? Conti, Conti M. It's okay. Conti M. A, a perpetual calendar, essentially. Okay. Um, AP calls it a Conti M perpetual <laughs> or a QP for short. Right. right. Um, and that's a very, very important watch in 
in AP's roster, Clemson okay. with a Q. So yeah. what also what also I thought was interesting was that they made two hundred of them, which to me is a lot because AP does a lot of collabs. Oh, they like leaned into it. Yeah, they they do collab like every other week where it's like oh limited to fifty, one hundred, mm-hmm. or two hundred. Mm-hmm. You do enough of those that that's a lot of watches that adds up. They were yeah. the retail was two hundred and one thousand yeah. dollars for the doo doo brown. Yeah, doo doo brown, the chocolate. I believe they called yeah. it chocolate ceramic yeah. or something looked like, like that. It, looked like it came out of somebody's ass. Some <laughs> people, some people didn't <laughs> like it. A lot of people really didn't like it. Mode. People didn't like it just because it was a wrapper. Honestly, that's why people didn't like oh, it. I thought it was. Cool. And it's Travis Scott who fucking sucks. Yeah. But anyway, and it is also just racism. It's agreed. No, there is. <laughs> yeah, a, it true. really, really, true. really, really is a lot of that. Do you think is there also a lot of just like the watch watch brands and watch world and watch marketing take on like kind of like more hype, not hype beast the site, but like like 2016 hype beast, hype beast tactics with like collaborations, celebrity endorsements, all that shit. Like it feels even with working with content creators, no offense, but it feels like a little I don't know, like what a streetwear brand. The playbook to that we've seen. Yeah, that might be is outdated. For other industries, limited drops. Yeah, I mean, it, it's really that's really more of an AP thing. I mean, every watch, okay. every watch brand does limited stuff, and they kind of always have. But and he, celeb ambassadors have always existed. Yes, definitely. There's always been celeb amb- ambassadors, so it's not really a new thing. I mean, these are it still street wear, though. No. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's a there's more crossover than ever with streetwear right, and, right. and expensive watches. Sure. So uh, yeah. thanks, Ben Baller. Yeah. <laughs> how how does the racism in the watch industry manifest itself? It's a, there's a lot. Um, and sexism too, right? Yes, definitely. Let's focus on racism. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, like I was saying with the Travis Scott thing, I mean, people didn't like it. I think a lot of people didn't like it just because it was Travis Scott. Because it was brown. I mean, <laughs> they, they, they were just, against just, the watch. Yeah. just the different the different comments I, I get for white ceramic. Yeah. <laughs> the, the comment the comments I get when I have a person of Asian descent, perhaps, oh. are, are a different type of That's comments. That's why I've never been on. Um, I get you know I do with I do a lot of videos. Sicko. Yeah, it's true. Um, <laughs> The videos I do at Chen's in Chinatown, which yeah. is the spot I go to. Which are that's your, some of the best. Definitely. That's your boy. Yeah, Chen is my boy. Shout out Chen on Mott Street. He is a legit watchmaker, watch collector, and watch, watch dealer. Yeah, he's a, he, he fixes Fire. watches. Yeah. And so did his father and his grandfather. Yet, when I post these videos, oh, I just bought this Patek in Chinatown from Chen. People are like, it's got to be fake. Guaranteed fake. Wow. You're an idiot. I thought I knew what you were doing. <laughs> it's from China. It had. He's, I can't. I honestly like cannot believe. That's bullshit. I think it has a lot to do with like Welcome America, baby. Yeah, the FYP. And I spell that with three Ks. I, I figured. <laughs> um, I think Thanks. FYP. Uh, ice cube. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. America's yeah. most wanted. Yeah. Um, and Tupac, right? Oh, Tupac. 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 My bad. I'm Come racist. On. Yeah. <sighs> They'll sound like you better. Words. FYP. Pay. Let's move but on. So okay. a lot of. A lot of a lot of uh, anti-Asian sentiment in your comments. It's just something I notice, and I notice it a lot. It, it, I mean, with, because it hits the algo and it, everyone. That, yeah, because it really, I think it spreads out more so than on Instagram. It's oh, like it goes this way to the right, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it yeah. goes yeah, yeah. somewhere in between California and New York. <laughs> <laughs> what about if you have like a a, rap, a rapper on who is a person of color? Uh, in the comments uh, also a, is out a, of pocket. A, definitely a similar element. Um, I'm shocked they have this nice. Why? Why are you shocked? Oh, that's mm-hmm. not some bust down bullshit. That is right. actually like like Clint's fucking Onyx dial shit or whatever. That's fucking yes. sick. I, I think people respect and fear Clint, so I don't get as much <laughs> on the Clint videos. And he yeah, has exceptional taste. And Clint is actually a genius, I have to say. And he has amazing taste in watching. Anyway, enough glazing. Can but you, I don't really get, get Clint them. on the pod. We've been trying through so many different fucking. Um, well, he's always, he's here for like 24 yeah, hours. Yeah, like, and he's in and out. He usually hits me up when he's already here. Okay. Um, he's touched down and he's like, let's go shopping. I mean, not yeah. exactly that, but I mean, yeah. I mean, you know. I, I, he, yeah. I feel like he would do well on here. I think it would be, oh, like, being, are you kidding me? He's yeah. definitely like someone that is attainable. That's like a grail guest for does him, he, so. does he know about, does he know about uh, the only podcast yeah, that no, matters? I, I think yes. through bar yes. or we, we yeah. for Has bar on, been on here? Yeah. Well, yeah. the old show. Yeah. Bar's the best. We'll we need to beg for guests on pod. I can. Well, yeah. Drake. Then Claire. Well, they're, you know, they're, 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 they're buddies. Uh, what would you be doing if you never caught the bezel bug? I'd probably still be a DJ, which we really? didn't talk about, which I was a DJ for 15 would years. Would you be yeah. dead? No, probably not, but I'd be more depressed. Yeah. Did you hate it? DJing? Yeah. Yeah. At the end, I hated it. Why do you hate it so much? What was so bad It was just it? such burnout. First of all, I mean, I do, I'd done it for 15 years. It got to a point where the other thing about it is you're not necessarily making more money year, year over year as a DJ. Um like I feel like the fashion gigs now pay the same they paid ten years ago, and sort of like the club gigs. Okay. I mean, listen, we're ta- we're not talking about a diplo level, right, right, right. Um, to be more more of like grinding DJing in the city and like you know, Isaac likes level. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean Isaac's crushing thing. it to be honest, but yeah. yeah. Um, What's your budget? Yeah. 
What's your request? <laughs> um, but yeah, towards the end, it was just getting depressing. I didn't care about it anymore. I didn't listen to music recreationally anymore. Damn. Yeah, I really burned out. I hated it. I also don't drink and I never drank in my entire life. Oh, really? Yeah, so I was Ever? always at these You're clubs. You're a teetotaler. I'm, I'm totaling tea. Okay. Interesting. I did not know that. Damn. I thought tea, you got tea sober. And You're just a fucking drag. When you hear bro. about a sober ex nightlife guy, you assume that he was exactly. Uh, people a rock people type. think I'm in recovery. Yeah. No. But you know. So DJing was so terrible. It turned you off from music. <laughs> that sounds bad. And nightlife and Damn. going out. Do you yeah. go out? I mean, you, I, see you I mean, you re- like I, bars. Yeah. I, I mean, once Clandos. a month. <laughs> sure. Yeah, clandestino. <laughs> um, or after hours in the back of scars. But no, right. I mean. I don't, I really don't go out, but I did for a very, very long time. I mean, everything led me to watches starting with like skateboarding and punk rock. Right. Then was music something you're obsessed with to the point you're obsessed with watches. And then it's just kind of like, I was for a few years, like from teenage years up until like 23. Okay. And then well, after that, I was like, <sighs> what did you spin primarily? Were you a hip hop guy? The, house guy yeah. Or? Towards the end, it was hip hop because I was playing, right. you know, fashion parties. Right. Okay. So, you know, it was, it was a lot of hip hop. the fashion killer. Exactly. <laughs> um, but at the beginning, it was really just like hipster dive bars in the mid 2000s, okay. like Smith's Clash. Uh, we Cure. saw that. We saw that 21 year old. Oh, yeah. We saw that 21 year old post too. Fucking okay. Yeah. MGMT ass motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. My man looked like he ran hipster runoff, bro. I mean, so by the time M- MGMT came around, I was in my mid 20s. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're also uh, more of a Phoenix guy. So mm-hmm. besides if you're off music and you don't party, what are your hobbies and interests besides watches? Like currently, that Honestly, you still currently have? I don't really have very many. Really? Damn. Like travel, which is such Just like do. a corny answer. Eh. Um, I, I do like cooking. I like food. Travel's not a corny answer. I just where feel you, like it's like the oh, it's like a ten year profile. I love to travel. Fair. Where I are you mean, trying to go this year? I'm going to Tokyo in less than a month. Fuck yeah. My, Yo, your Tokyo my, map was crazy, by the oh, way. Oh yeah. Um, I wasn't able to visit any of them. <laughs> <laughs> Better that way. Maybe maybe an Izakai or two, actually. Okay. I think like I, I took some of your food stuff, but a lot of like watch stuff, I was like, I'm not. Yeah, you, know, you are a gourmand. I guess you, I guess you could say gourmand better yeah. than foodie. Yeah, yeah, well, no, we yeah. don't. Yeah. So that's a slur. Don't throw the F word around. That's a slur. Exactly. Yeah. We say that's bon. the only F word you don't use. Yeah, yeah. it's true. <laughs> Jesus, it's true. Bon vivant. Maybe? Bon vivant. Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tokyo. About? Do you go to do you go anywhere uh, a flaneur? Do you go Ooh, anywhere yeah, in Japan besides Tokyo or just? I've Edo? been other places, but I'm pretty obsessed with Tokyo, where I go and I just stay there for three weeks and I don't. Oh, I'm gonna go to Kyoto and go to the bamboo forest and like. I'm gonna yeah. go to, I mean, I've been to. I've done Naoshima. I've done. Kobe and Osaka. I've actually never done Kyoto. Apparently, they're having a tourism crisis. Oh, yeah? It's like overrun. Oh, yeah. Dude, the amount of fucking mayo monkeys I saw when I was there was disgusting. Mm. When you go to Japan, how long are you going for this? I'm going for like three three weeks. weeks. So, are you going to take a break from creating content and like just like, no, it's so it's work, it's business and pleasure always. Yeah. And I'll be buying now that I'm like buying and selling independently, I'll be buying way more. Are you nervous at all about taking this big bet on yourself now that it's just Mike out here? Uh, I'm nervous. Not, not really. I mean, I'm pretty confident. Um, would you have done it without the times profile? Yeah. It was going to happen. Regardless. Yeah. I would have done it without the times profile for sure. Do you ever get sick of the shit? Like the way that you kind of got burnt out of music? Like, do you ever feel yourself kind of, cause every day and like, even when you're traveling and taking time for yourself and still doing it, like making the content is, is I'm more prone to burnout versus the watches. I don't, right. I don't really get burned out on the watches, but making the content when it's like 10 PM, I'm like, fuck, I have nothing to post tomorrow. Right. That's when, was the, that, when was the last time you didn't post something? Yeah, I didn't post two days ago, I think. Wow. How did you feel? I, I mean, I've intentionally, I'll intentionally take a day off. Don't there. mean I had just done the levels, Mi- the extremely Mi- low. Yeah. <laughs> I did the Miami Beach Antique Show, which is like a huge, the biggest antique show in the country where dealers come from all over the world. Right. So I was surrounded by watch dudes for like four days. But in those four days, I, know crazy I got like 20 <laughs> videos. Yeah, it does. Um, <laughs> and tw- and I got like 20 videos in those four days. So I, I was like coasting off, okay. off that stuff. And those videos did pretty well. And when you post something- do you just let it rock or are you like constantly checking in like, what are the comments saying? Actually, is this, is what's this funny crazy? is I probably use the app way less than average for the average, mm-hmm. than the average creator. Like I make the video, I'll check in once an hour or two later to see how it's doing. And then I might close the app for the rest of the day. What's your screen time? Lower than you think probably. I don't know what it is, but it's probably lower than you think. Over under seven hours. Oh, it's gotta be under. I spend more time on CapCut, which is the editing app, right, 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 than right. I do Making on TikTok. The for sure. Sure. Oh, no, no. Screen time, time total. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I never even check. You want me to check? Yes. I swear to God. <laughs> I don't even, you're going to have to tell me how to check. So I just search screen time. You just like uh, pull down and just search screen time. All right, here we no, go. no, like not like fully down, a little down. Yeah, like a grandma go. here. Screen. Yeah. What do you think it's going to be? Uh, we're going to go over under. It's going to be over seven. I'm going to say over seven. Yeah, you're going to be over seven. You have it? Oh my God. It's, <laughs> geez, how is this possible? 24. Well, hold the mic. 
to close your mouth and Sorry. embarrass yourself. Oh my god! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> How is it? Uh, Ten hours, forty five minutes. Jesus Christ, Mike! It's down fourteen percent from no! last week. Oh my god. <laughs> You broke 12. Bro, you're out of control. You have a problem. How? But are you been, are you like, how? You're are you on cap cut for 11 hours, brother. Are you, are you scrolling on like I, I really, IG or? I guess. I mean, do you do, do you do all your emails and shit on there? Wait, the number just went up. It went to 11 hours, oh 11 minutes. God, no, Yeah, bro. I do emails and stuff. Of course, I really would have never guessed that to me. Oh, you just got God so hard. <laughs> oh, that's, that's really sickening, actually. Yeah. Have you ever delete? Let's, let's, uh, let's try to bring this back. Sure. Um, from the brink. <laughs> that was embarrassing. I'm not even that bad. How are you? Wow. No, what, what, are you I don't like, even know what I'm doing on there. Are you shocked and appalled? I'm a little bit shocked. Yeah, I would have guessed four hours. <laughs> what? <laughs> a third? I don't know what's average. It's not something I even, I even uh, consider. Like People I'm talk like, about their I'm steps. Like, I'm like I don't know about steps either. I'm like seven-ish, which is good. I used to be eight. And I'm like, I need to, you know, that first hour in the morning, I need to not be on my phone. But why do we need, why do we need to lower the number? Well, 11 hours is a lot of, I'm at three hours today. Go back, go back. What was last week? Your average. Surprised you've been awake for three hours. Yeah. <laughs> last week, six hours, six okay. minutes. So I'm under yeah. seven. I think a lot of it is That's at night in much. bed when I'm doing the edits when I'm like, yeah. Also, have, as a, as an individual entrepreneur, you're probably doing a lot of work on your phone. Yes. And I think it does measure. I think sometimes it measures uh, background shit. Like uh, friends that have friends that have kids, like if they have just like their baby monitor up and I'm not saying you have children that we don't mm -hmm. m know about, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. just like monitoring their kids that that counts as like phone time. So maybe you have some shit. I don't know. Some watch shit. Have you ever deleted a video or had like for any reason and why? And I please. haven't, I haven't deleted a video because of content. There was like a few weeks ago, Jake Wolf called me up in a panic. Oh no. He was like, did you look at your video? Uh -oh. I'm like, no, he's like, I'm like, he's like, it's, it's an hour. It's only like 300 views and mine are all doing the same. I'm like, well, it's not normal numbers for you, oh, but you I'm saying, like Whoa. Whoa. no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Shout out Jake. Wolf. you guys were getting suppressed that day or whatever. Everyone was. And okay, then I looked no. online like every, so I mean, I just deleted the video and reposted it later three, like two days later. Like right. it was like a crisis that creators were having the creator yeah. crisis yeah. of 2024. Yeah. Or, or if a video does like Black unusually, Tuesday. unusually unusually poorly i would maybe i will take it down and do a recut and repost Got it. it okay but i typically don't delete or what's your besides like having to keep up like what are your pet peeves around just the content creator world in general that it exists that i have to do it every day yeah. um what about like the other people in it like <clears throat> that's gotta my for you page terrible. is really weird um i don't get any watch content i don't consume any just watch titties, content just, just titties titties and cars uh there's not that many no no cars i don't really care all about titties. that i get all food titties. food stuff okay. cat stuff okay japan, oh, right. japan cat, stuff you're, you're oh, a cat nice. guy yep uh what how many cat, do you have one cat or i have one cat okay. tamago right mm, eggy yeah, egg it means egg in Japanese. The yeah. the heir to the Mike Glad Nouveau we have a translator fucking yeah. uh, fortune. Right? What about like having to deal with other content creators because that's such a cottage industry in and of itself, and like collab. Every, everybody needs to work together. We need to collab. We need to link up. Like, what is that? How does that affect your well, brain? Well, I do. I have I have a group chat oh, with um. So, so there's a there's a few I think T, uh, TF alums. Yeah, creating okay. a creator chat. Yeah, Mark Boudelier. Yeah, who, is, Mark who I think this episode is not no, no longer it available. Got removed because of uh, uh, DMCA. Yeah, takedown on the outro music. Sorry, Mark. I don't think we've, we've said that before. Probably. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Who else? Nolan's in there. Nolan White. Shout out Nolan. So his boss Aaron Levine has been on the show. Nolan. Okay, there we go. <laughs> there's a and Nolan will be with me in Japan as yes. well. Nice. Our friend Bailey. You know Bailey. Yeah. I know. Yep. Bailey. Little scamp. Yeah. Is Isaac in the chat? I, Isaac. Another Isaac alumnus. in the chat. Isaac's the one that dresses like a Victorian child, right? Yeah. That's Isaac. That's Isaac. No, no, that's Bailey. Yeah. Bailey. Yes. Yeah. Bailey dresses like a Victorian, a ghost of a Victorian like a, child. Like a, like a chimney sweep. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, Tati, Illuma Tati. I don't know Tati. No. Mm -hmm. She's cool. She's in there. Um, she's the one that did, did that like um, make Instagram Instagram again campaign that like Kim K reposted. Oh, damn. Got no. like a trillion. I mean, she has, like, she has a few million. I guys like, let's go to Washington Square Park and like. No, no, no. <laughs> we, we, we almost never collab. It's really just about complaining uh, about the algorithm and stuff. Mike, Mike, have you seen the views? It's bad. Take it down. No. Take it down. Yeah. <laughs> Got complaining it. about other content creators yeah basically oh yeah. like shit talking cool no, every, everything shit. we're roasting each other yeah yeah stuff like that nice. but you know we send each other the links when we post like oh can you please want blah, blah, blah. oh right comment best practice can i have a can i please have a crumb of yeah. like one like sir mm -hmm. um mike how much money do you make yeah god it's really gonna change now for i don't even i don't know if it's gonna change up or down but it's certainly gonna change it's hard because i'm really in like a eat what you kill business and if i do nothing for a week i don't make any money yeah 
Um, so really like, God, it's tricky. Are you eating off of TikTok? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Yeah. A little bit for sure. What are you doing? Fucking eligible for commission watch sales? No, but uh, what's funny is there's no sponsored content. There's maybe one sponsored post ever. Whereas like everyone else in this chat is making their living off of that. Um, that's why I thought, you know, I, I kind of throw in a fashion video or two here or there. So the TikTok is really to, it's like marketing for yourself to kind of some money's in the watches. Yeah. The, the, the really, if you have to break it down, the videos raise awareness of my existence, and then people bring me watches. You are the watch guy. Yeah, I guess so. As far as for better concerned. or worse. Yeah, for better or worse. For better at this point. Yeah, since you could be self-employed. And also, I'm in the like TikTok creativity fund, whatever it's called, which pays a little bit, a couple grand a month. Oh wow, uh, yeah, that's not bad. bad no, no, it's not. No, it's, it's not. It's like if you get a million views, you're probably getting like eight hundred bucks. Oh, that's like how good. often do you hit a milli? Every day, not as be. often as I'm not, not as often as I would like once a month. What's your most viewed video? There's like a 14 million viewer. What was that about? What was it was me getting a custom made to measure watch strap from Jean Rousseau, who are like the best strap makers. How much is a strap like that? Um, I think that one was like 600 something bucks, but you can get them for a hundred. Like there's, I, I did all the bells and whistles for the video. Got it. Got it. Got it. 800 bucks. I mean, that's enough to feed Tamago for a month, you know? Yeah. yeah. Right? And then the half video paid that, for the month. strap and then a lot more. So yeah. Oh, and it got me like insane followers. And that was a good time to have like a video, like really good. go nuts. Hell besides yeah. watches. Yes. And besides, let's say we didn't talk about fashion. No, we didn't. Oh, well, well, the, maybe we'll come up because we want to know. Yeah, we want to know. What do you like to spend your hard earned money on? Yeah, I actually don't spend money a lot. I like I but really John's, right. You just you kind of were. Uh, yeah, I'm like a, I'm like a I'm having a, a John resurgence a little nice. bit. Hell yeah, dude. I I literally went ten years not caring at all. That's probably why we didn't talk about fashion. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> the starts of this were Rick and Colm and Junior right, right. Paul Hart in, in the two thousands. Did you sell a lot of that to fund your watch habit? Not to fund it, but I did sell a lot of it. I still have a bunch of old Paul Hart and I've old like a lot of old Colm and Rick. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, bust, um, out, bust out the Rick again. Become a Rick guy. Do you know what I did? I, I actually hired somebody from Task Rabbit. <laughs> not, this is not sponsored. Who came over like a stylist woman and like dug through my closet, figured out like literally 200 items that I didn't wear. And she photographed and measured every single one and then sent it to me on a spreadsheet. And then I get listed it all on Grail. Oh, she just did the hard work. Did all yeah. the hard work. And by the time I was up to like uploading number 10, the first ones were selling nice. already. Nice. Hell yeah, dude. So yeah, I purged a lot are you getting back into it is it yeah but not on, not, that, on like, not on like the same level what's uh what's take on your pickle i still love like the japanese brands i still love like i i mean visvim yeah i have i have like a pair of visvim jeans that i got last year in japan i like capital visvim freewheelers i love mm-hmm. i love the you know the japanese denim brands I like oni samurai You're a standard something. and strange type ass no more of a self-edge guy oh okay mm-hmm. all right yeah shout out self-edge um yeah. But really, I just buy all this shit on, on Yahoo Japan yeah, right, right. <laughs> for a third you, of the price. When you go there, going to go with like a half empty suitcase and like really get uh, into I, it. I, sh- I ship stuff back. I'll actually. share my sh- my map with you because I feel like it's there's more. You had John stuff on there, but it was like undercover, yeah, yeah, Garcon. capital stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I actually what I was doing was I found like um, you know the designer what's her name uh, Yoko Sakamoto. Okay. They sell it at Colbo she the, she and CHCM. The bagels, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They sell oh, yeah. No, I've seen her at Colbo. Yeah, it's fire. Yeah, that's cool stuff. And I was like, okay, let me go on the website here, see who stocks them in Tokyo, mm. then see what else they stock. Because these are all like CHCM see, this shops is, yeah, in yeah, yeah. Tokyo, gotcha. which were not on my list. And now I have like 50 of them on my right. list. This is how true John's enthusiasts, a this John's is the man. hunt. This is the discoverability and this is like the, yeah. the watch hunter mentality that you're taking over to John's. Which like don't get lost in the sauce, all right? I'm telling you right now. But uh, yeah, people are just like, how do I find new brands? Like, go to the good stores and yeah, see yeah, who they sure. stock. Is. Yeah, these people are curating these shops. Yo, what's the logistics and or legality of okay? You go to Japan, you cake up on hella watches. You got to declare them. Do you ship them back? Do you sneak them in the suitcase? Not well, I haven't really, busted, I haven't really done butt, it yet. The but what, what is the possible? What, what are you supposed to do? What, well, like, I'll tell you what. The, the best thing, honestly, to do is just ship it back via FedEx and do everything correctly. Yeah, eh, up the butt. I mean, listen, if you want to put something up your butt, there's plenty of have opportunities yeah. in Tokyo for yeah. that. Yeah, true. And you, you don't even need to go to Japan, dude. We yeah, have I the mean, greatest city in the world of sticking things up your butt. Dude. Yeah, you go to Germany. Have you put a watch up your butt? <laughs> Never. Okay. Just had to be clear. Yeah. yeah. Had to be sure. Right. Uh, okay, so John's, that's where we're going to start spending the money? Assuming no, that I'm, there's I'm not money saying to be spent? that. You know, but I think this is such a, a John-centric pod. Yeah. The only wow. pod that matters. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I just thought, you know, we get into the weird 
I, you know, I had, a, I, I had an era that, you know, a lot of people are only now approaching, like, like very gothy and... Right, right, right. right. But you support a lot of your friends now, whether it's Awake or Cortez, Definitely. Fugazi, Fugazi, it's yeah. Awazi, it's Uzi, <laughs> Exactly. Whatever. Oh, the video with Trev about the Louis Vuitton watch, yeah, that, that also was a thing that was a, like a domino effect. That was crazy. Yeah, that was like probably the watch I... I hate saying it myself, if other people want to talk about it, I don't... I like... The, yeah, that that watch went fucking crazy after that video, and there was articles about that video. Right. And like, when I did the video, I didn't know who Trevor was. Oh, that yeah. was me but, meeting him. But so that's this really is, yeah. this is the Mike Nuvo effect. I guess so. But yeah. Also, I mean, that video, to Trevor because he's a fucking genius. And yeah, that, yeah, it, definitely. Hence the taste no, level he has of good, having the watch. Yes, yeah. he has good taste. Yeah. What's funny is Mr. Enthusiast, who we mentioned earlier, had two or three of those watches wow. sitting. And the reason I even spotted it, not the reason I spotted it, but the reason I even brought it up was because him and I were sitting outside Colbo yeah. and Trevor walks in who I had never seen in my fucking life. And people are like, oh, this is set up. It's Trevor. I'm like, I never knew him before that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know anything about it. I saw this kid wearing the Louis Vuitton Monterey 2, which is a Louis Vuitton watch from the 80s made by IWC, whatever. Um, and he's wearing it and he walks in and I say to Mr. Enthusiast, I said, do you see what he's wearing? I was like, no, I'm like, he's wearing the Monterey too. He's like, what? Yeah. And he looks in, he's like, I'm going to try to buy it right off that fucker's wrist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, whatever happened, what ended up happening? So like I start recording 1000% authentic. They're going back and forth. They're trying to negotiate. Um, and in the end he's like, I, he didn't sell it. Wow. And I thought the video was going to fly. I'm like, how, I'm like I, well, how much was the offering at its highest? I think maybe three grand at the time wow. they were probably worth 1500 and okay. Trevor had paid 600 wow. like within a year. Crazy. So really it, like, and what are they going for now? Yeah. Three grand? What's the mic? I, we sold Nouveau two effect. for around $20,000. What? Yes. Shut the fuck up. The thing is they are yeah. rare. $20,000. Yes, they are rare, but people were not paying attention to them because it's a funny combination. It's Louis Vuitton, which is collectible. But you think it's a fashion watch, so what fashion watches are collectible? But it's made by IWC, which is a very legit brand. Yeah, of course. And it, and it was made Portuguese, by- Portuguese, right? An import, uh, no, they're, they're, they're from Schaffhausen. Oh, fuck. Um, I went for it. They have a watch called the Portuguese, which, ah, is, maybe, which is what's doing it for you. There he is. Got to the bottom of that real quick. Um, so fuck. Fuck. so it's an interesting combination of things with this watch. Oh. And you know, we did the video. I thought it was going to be a throwaway video. Mm -hmm. It Crazy. got like 4 million views. Woo! People were going fucking nuts. Damn, that's Trevor. Then I, I like go on like Reddit. People are like, does anyone want to buy Louis Vuitton Monterey 2? Like 10 posts like that. I was like, okay, people are really looking for this thing now. Um, 20 grand. And it's a watch I never thought about. A watch I would never wear. They're actually pieces of shit, to be honest. <laughs> Mechanically, they're pieces of shit. And like, I don't know if I've ever even seen a fully 100% working correctly. <laughs> one that's functioning that's fire, at 100%. Well, and watches yeah, aren't there to tell the time. Yeah. I'd I mean, love that, to buy your broken timepiece for $20,000. People were buying the broken ones for wow. 10 grand. Damn. Jesus. Fuck yeah, no, that was, that was, that was a crazy one. Damn. Uh, what is a large purchase, not watch related that you've made recently that you came to highly regret? God, um, I don't really know if there's any, yeah, because I, you're I, I, I'm telling you, I do not spend, I do not spend money. Do you go out, do you eat crazy meals? Occasionally, but I cook more than anything. But I'll do like a five hundred dollar omakase at like sushi nods or something like okay. that. Like I like that, but it's not every week for is sure. Scar, is, is, is Scar is omakase the number your number one? No, but I do love it. I think it's great. You liked it, right? Yeah, and pretty good deal for what you're paying. Value yeah, play, I, right? I think the price will probably have to go up if I had to guess. Oh shit! Get yeah. it now. Well, the getting is good. Yeah, I'm trying. I would love to buy an apartment at some point in my life, right? Which would be obviously you and the, every other New Yorker. I know. Good luck, brother. I know. Sell some more watches. I have to. Um, Mike. Yes. As someone who is very much in our world, in our hearts, even in our loins. Yeah, who we love and respect. After going through this experience with the only podcast that matters, do you have any constructive criticism that you'd like to give us as we kind of like continue to forge our own path? Yeah, we're all yours. Well, if you're truly moving into New York City, aka Manhattan for the podcast, yes. I think that'd be oh, a big work, improvement. Work Island, as yeah. the TikTokers say. Yep. So we should get an office. We get that office. So next time I won't have to walk 30 minutes from the L train to record? <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, that, that's on you, dude. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, you guys are the best. You guys are truly like the best, I'd mm. say. Thanks. This, for, the, for this glazing <laughs> session. Um, <laughs> yeah, we really are yeah. setting no, up. No, it's really, really sticky over there. No, I gotta I say, say what's, what's funny <laughs> is when Isaac went on, Yeah. When Isaac came on, when was that? Two years ago or when was that? <laughs> long time ago. Long yeah, time ago. Was, he was so fucking excited. And I was <laughs> roasting him. I'm like, nobody cares about this. I don't know what this is. Wow. I've never heard of this. What the like, fuck, dude? No, I swear to God. But Sounds I, like I, a, you're being a little QP. And by that, I mean cunty. <laughs> <laughs> perpetually. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. kidding. Um, and I never, I wasn't a podcast guy. And I, both. I listened, I listened, <laughs> I listened to his podcast. I was like, oh, this is unlistenable. <laughs> <laughs> And, and then, no, but then I, I started listening and I was like, th I, this is truly a podcast that, that I, I almost like never miss. Woo! 
Thanks. And I'm, Fuck I'm, it, I'm a dude. Patreon subscriber. Woo! Thank you. I think it's $2.50 a month, the lowest tier. Yeah. Well, five, five bucks. Five. five bucks. We'll give you a discount. Well, I, well when you, it's $2.50 to each of us. Right, right, right. Figured. <laughs> um, wait, what's the highest tier? 20. Well, you, you can actually do whatever you want, but the highest one we've locked in is 20. And you could do a yearly for 57, a little deal, a little dealio, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, we appreciate, appreciate your patronage and all the kind words. Also, yeah. I think it's very important, which a lot of big podcasts are still not doing is the video. And I see some of your videos popping off on TikTok, yeah. and that's free content. Yeah. Do you think we should start doing man on the street, men oh, no. fucking shit on Absolutely. TikTok? How much does your outfit cost? You know, that kind of shit. Yes, yeah. I know. I, I understood. Okay. Um, <laughs> Do you understand the bit I'm doing right now? <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. Yo, what's the number one red flag in a fucking fat titted bitch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway no comment we, um, should, we shouldn't do that because like honestly i'm not gonna lie sometimes we see like that stuff happen and it's a bit like whoa are they kind of like eating our lunch on tiki talkie well you know what i do think that if you wanted to i, I thought you guys were way above that but oh yeah well i, I don't know what's the goal more viewers more yeah. more, more, more bag more bigger bags more open the funnel customers yeah more open the funnel for uh, more patrons i mean you could definitely views. have like a throwing fits network of all different shit other other podcasts yeah the mike and jake wolf know. hour oh sure right yeah. would you ever do a pod uh Are there, there's he, watch pods i mean jeremy I, does watch pods you know uh, yeah shout out jeremy um, I, maybe I would. I don't know. It just seems like time, so much work. Time for it, yeah. and I, I think the worst yeah. thing is like doing it and then three months later quitting. Oh, uh, yeah. You I'm sure that it. happens. I'm sure you watch that. Oh, that's happen every, all the time. Most podcasters. Yeah, consistency is. You got to lock in for know. what five years now. I like, mean, for throwing fits. Is, is yeah. it really that long? For TF, we started in January 2020. Wow. How many? And, and are, are and, most episodes still online? Yeah. yeah, except for Mark Boudelet. Yeah. <laughs> That's a one episode. <laughs> like, like, this episode is such trash. Then, we're getting rid of it. And then the pot, the show before that, we started in 2016. So we've been doing it for. Was that like the same format? I don't know anything about no, that. No, 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 no. no, no. I don't uh, think so. No, I don't no, know. No. They're, whatever. Who so knows? you started like on YouTube for Complex, right? Is that, started is that on, what? Sound, no, yeah. started on, well, kind of, but then. Uh, filling up or starting on SoundCloud. Yeah, dude. Oh, wow. One it's microphone. Been a, it's been a journey. You were still DJing. Single mic. Yeah, <laughs> I was still DJing. That was a, that was a dark you room on Lumbo Street. SoundCloud, we were potting on SoundCloud. We were yeah. podcasting about the newfound phenomenon of uh, Snapchatting buttholes. Wow. Hole picks. Hole picks. That's how old it was, was people were Hole picks snapping. were a new, hole picks were a new phenomenon. Hole, holes, yeah. yeah. Now they just have holes in their watches. All right, Mike, mm -hmm. thank you for Thanks, coming Mike. on to the only Thank you so much for having me. That matters. Oh, yeah. yo, dude. Where can the kids follow you? Yeah, what do you want to plug? You can follow me at Mike Nuvo on Instagram and TikTok. That's really it. Twitter? Uh, no. My Twitter's private, I think. Okay. Word. Yeah. Good to know um, when we promote this. What about Reddit? No, not on there. No? I view. Uh, what's, what's funny is that I posted once, like eight years ago, I did a I did a, a Christmas card with my cat that went like viral. It was the number one post on Reddit. Woo! Really? I swear to God, yeah. And the account was just like, it was just like a throwaway account, basically. Don't you do a card with your cat every year? I only did two or three of them, okay. and I'm like, this is way too much work, and <laughs> I don't have any ideas. <laughs> watch Reddit has this, seems like a scary place. I really don't even go on there, the to be honest. The dregs of society. But is it, is it, well, is it I'll a tell bad you what, place? Reddit Watch Exchange, I would say, is a great place. There's not many places for end users to trade watches for free eBay's oh. taking a cut, PayPal's taking right. a cut. Oh, good point. Like watch exchange, as long as you could vet each other, I think is a good place to find accessible like a, watches. Like a swap skis. I mean, you could buy, sell, trade, but, oh, right, but I always right. tell people if like, oh, I want to sell this watch. I see it listed for $10,000. Well, you will never get $10,000 for it. Right, right, you right. will sell it to a dealer who needs to make money and then they right. will send sell it for $10,000. So it, probably it. the best way to sell a watch that you own, you know, if it's under five grand is probably Reddit watch exchange. And I look at it occasionally, right. but I don't really post. Well, you learn something new every day, folks. Yeah. Reddit, good. All right, so follow this man and uh, tap in. Chef, take us out. Thanks, Mike. Thank you.